Y'all's the hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all's the hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Do rag energy. I'm on a wave. Matt is cap. Yo. Shout out to Nas for the terrible album. Having meetings, cold <laughs> sake, Kobe beef, hockey jersey with the hoodie underneath. Oh, nigga, where is your suit? <laughs> Man, you got a suit on. What are you talking about? A billionaire with poor people talk. Oh, my That's goodness, insane. man. Uh, for those of you not on Patreon, welcome to the Realest Podcast ever. For, for those of you that are not on Patreon, Matt had an epic. He had, I, I, it's, it's a meltdown. I'm going to call it what it's it is. It's a flat-out meltdown. He had a flat-out meltdown. Um, you know, as a Nas yeah. fan. His frustration over the years that Nas keeps doing project bench rap, despite his status as a billionaire in Yo. life. Y'all are here. We're gonna release. Yo, yeah, it we're, gonna, we're gonna re- we're gonna release that segment. It's about thirty minutes. It's a, I, I, it's I, a good thirty. The ball. crazy part is, it's gotten a lot of traction already just on the Patreon. People <laughs> yeah. laughing, people hitting me up, and somebody hit me yesterday. It was like, "Yo, I'm one of Nas' biggest fans," and you absolutely right. Like it's becoming like undeniable. Where it's like, "Yo." All of these projects, King's Disease, King's Disease 2, KD3, Magic, Magic 2, they're essentially the same Joan. It's just the same. That's what it is. Yeah, it's just different sessions. Just no different pictures. It's, <laughs> it's just the same. Joan. Y'all record this the same day? <laughs> and it's like, we, 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 Nas is so much of a legend. And he's so much of an icon. And I personally think, lyrically, he's the best rapper alive. I said yeah. that before. He can paint a picture better than most people. But when it comes to these projects, like, you know, we just completely ignore, like, the misses. Like the Kanye Nas album was a complete failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The nigger album was like baloney. It just was. And it's just, it's gotten to the point now where it's like, yo, none of this kind of like evolves to a place of you just being up here and everybody not being up there because you Nas. Yeah. You're Nas. That's what it is. When Drake rap, Drake raps like I'm Drake. And none of y'all are Drake. Yeah. Am I lying? Yeah. When Jay-Z raps, Jay-Z raps like, yo, I'm Hova. None of y'all niggas is even close and to And even to, to cement the point, they walk around through life with that aesthetic. Drake just showed up in New York with a dog mask dog. on. Like, for the dogs coming soon. He got the dog mask on in the Yankees jersey. You know what Seriously. I'm saying? Seriously. Just doing whatever the fuck they want to do. And my homie hit me was like, yo, it'd be crazy because it's like you get the real Nas fans, the super fans, where it's like, you, you, no, see, you just not in the right frame of mind. Why I got to get in the right frame? Like, why do I got to go and get the encyclopedia? You know what I'm saying? Don't forget the Britannica. The, don't forget your Britannica before you listen to this. And that's what it is. Like, like no, because when, like, you know, when you, when you get to, like, really, really just, you know, the the the, the, the Greek teachings, and, and it's just like, yo, dog, like, why, why when I listen to what happened to Virgil, did I not have to understand the Greek teachings? Right. When I listened to God did, I didn't have to get, you know, a professor from Cornell to bust this it's up. It's just a good song. It's just, I did, like... Niggas really be like, no, nah, because if you if you really if you if you in Sagittarius Moon, <laughs> the Pisces Sun will align, and at at twelve oh six, the Aries River, and the Aries River start flowing at twelve oh six. That shit is the greatest rap you ever heard. And it's just like, no, it isn't. It just isn't. It isn't. Nas, I read the John last night, yo. Nas has ownership in more shit than we even thought about. Yeah. Steve Stout said it. He got in on everything. Bro, I'm about to pull he, this shit he up. He got in on everything. He like said 50s and beans. Yeah, he said he said them he said them them what's the names? He said the uh the the rings and the this and the that, whatever, all these announcements. He said you're gonna keep seeing them because he's in on every single company. Queensbridge Investments has made dozens of angel investments over the years, some of which have gone on to increase dramatically in value. The firm's investments typically range from 100000 to 500000 in range. The fund receives over 100 pitches per month from new firms seeking capital. Some of Queensbridge Investments' biggest hits include Dropbox, Lyft, Uber, SeatGeek, General Assembly, Robinhood, Casper, PillPack, Pluto TV, Coinbase, and Genius. Queensbridge had a small slice of equity in Ring when it was acquired by Amazon for $1.1 billion. Queensbridge earned an estimated $40 million off of that deal alone. 
2019, Viacom acquired Pluto TV for $350 million. Queensbridge was an, uh, a Series B round investor in Coinbase when they raised $25 million against $143 million valuation. By the time Coinbase IPO'd in April, Queensbridge investment was worth roughly $100 million. Why are you rapping about Cool G rap couch <laughs> and drinking 40s till you blacked out? When this is what's going on, this you is, this is your reality. Dropbox, pill pack. Base, put like <laughs> pill pack is sold for one point one billion Amazon. Bruh, shout out Pluto TV. We'll be on Pluto TV. We'll be on so Pluto we'll starting TV. in this fall. Shout out to that. So when I read these type of things about Jay Z and Jay's in partnership with Sprint, Busta Rhymes, uh, I mean Busta Rhymes, uh, uh, <laughs> Busta Budweiser, Rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Z's in partnership with Sprint, Samsung, Budweiser, all of these different things, and then, Jay, and then Jay get on a song and say, "I just made a million off a of sink without risking a million years trying to get it out the sink." You see the parallel? Mm -hmm. Nas is in, co in in cohorts with Lyft. Uber, Dropbox, Ring, and it gets on a song and be like, I still rock the hoodie underneath. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Rap about what's going on. No. No. <laughs> no, I, I have, a, I have a theory. I've thought about this since Friday. I have a theory. I think that his mind is like stuck in like a time loop from all the dust blunts from 87 to 92. And that's all he can remember is like that <sighs> era. When it's time to like put the pen to the pad, it's all Rakim era shit. Dog, dog. To see somebody just have this much going on where it's like this, this kind of intrigues us. Yeah. This, these are the things that intrigue me. I would love to hear about how you were in on the series B level of investing on these different things and how you even got to Kevin Hart the other day had a sit down with Mark Cuban. I was about to bring it up. <laughs> did, did you see it? I know you saw it. Did yes. you see it then? I was about to Kevin bring it up. Kevin Hart was talking about investing and he was like talking about the things he missed on. And he was like, he had a chance to get in on Uber when it was 250 grand. And he was like the 250 grand would have brought back. I don't know upwards of 100 million just where they was at but he was like I couldn't understand it where it's like what do you mean strangers picking strangers up people picking up strangers sounds like death just sounds like and Mark Cuban like I got one that's gonna beat that I was there for the initial meeting of the Uber shit the guy what's his name uh, Mark uh is it Mark? Or Trevor. Trevor. Tre whatever the fucking name is. He's like, he legitimately won it like I think it was like 75 grand or some shit like that. And Mark Cuban was like it would have been worth billions. Like, yeah. and he's like, yeah. I, you know, I yeah. just, yeah. He's, 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 he said, said that he, he actually told him like certain shit about it. He liked, but he was like, he just never hit me back about this. Yeah. Shit. He said, he said, out. he said he was off. He said, put in any 50 or a hundred thousand dollars at a $10 million valuation. He, he said at this point now, that stake would be worth billions. Mm -hmm. He said, I told him I'll do it, but at a $5 million valuation, because I don't know about the long term, blah, blah, blah. He said, okay, cool, no problem. And he just never, never called him back. back. <laughs> I talked to the uh, Louvre brothers. They, they, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they ain't got all this bullshit yeah. back and forth. Yeah. And it's like, when you hear, like, this is how the rich stay rich, for, for those that's out there listening. When you hear that level of, like, scrutiny that, Somebody that's already a billionaire, and this is a summar summarily small amount of money, mm -hmm. fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Like Mark Cuban pisses that type of money, and he's like, "Well, no, I gotta really vet this out." And it's like, "No, nigga, just give up the money." <laughs> like, but this is how the rich stay rich. They 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 are very mindful and calculated with what they put their money into, even when it's a good deal. He recognized this is a good deal, and still was like, "But at a five million dollar valuation instead of ten, he's like, oh yeah, cool, no problem. I'll call you back." Yeah. Jay Z. He says like his cousin's like yo give me forty five hundred I give you back a mil. He said it don't work. It doesn't like work. That way. It don't work like that. Nothing. <laughs> like, that's, that's not how it go. But it's just you 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 see these things you hear these things and it's just at a certain point and we had a great breakdown in the show because we basically flipped the the sides of the coin where it's like people are calling for for a new angle or a new dynamic in Lil Baby's career that's only been going on for five or six years. And Nas is 40 fucking years in. Making the same doing shit. Doing the same. And, and it's just like, yo. Doing a worse version of the same shit at that. And people are like, yes. Yes. Um, I saw something floating around. I kind of want to start the show on, on this note, even though we started already. There's a lot of like, 
You're not online. You're not on social media right now. There is Dan doesn't know what I'm talking. It's about. been so peaceful. <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking out of wine glasses. This has just been They're, so peaceful. The most annoying shit that's going on right now is all these different online narratives that like these different fan sites or a viral tweet will create and then people jump on it. So a, a, a popular narrative that I'm starting to see on more and more and more pages is, oh yeah, these new artists that's supposed to be young and hot is canceling their tours, but the legacy artists that, um, you know, the Wu-Tangs and the Nas's and this and this and 50 Cent is touring off of their back catalog and they selling out shows worldwide and and, and they can learn, a, these young niggas can learn a thing or two from these old niggas. So and I'm like, and I'm like, listen, <laughs> Economics aside, right? If you take those same artists, Wu Tang, Nas, Fifty Cent, if they release and Nas just released a new album, if they re- if they release a new album and they come out on stage and perform that shit, they're getting booed off the motherfucking stage no, because would. those fans are only paying this discounted ticket price to see you perform the shit that we love. Yeah. And if you come out here and perform anything other than that, Hennessy bottles and eight balls of 40 will be hurled at your motherfucking head top. Yeah, like at the end of the day, look at Ja Rule. He sells out the boardwalk every year. It's because he comes and does same. put it on me. You know what I'm it's saying? It's a time uh, capsule. All, always on time. Like, I, I can't see him coming out and be like, y'all ready for that new rule? <laughs> <laughs> we is not ready for the new rule. We didn't even know that we there was a new know. rule. <laughs> when we when did you go to the studio? We wasn't even prepared for no uh, new rule. Put it on me. Motherfucking pain is low. Like, they get the rule 336. Yeah. Holla, holla. You know what Always on like, time. <laughs> always on time. Remix. <laughs> all of that is cool. Yeah, that's not in my playlist. Yeah. That's not in my playlist at all. Apple Music yeah. Essentials don't have no new rule on it. Yo, you at the Ja Rule concert like it's a funeral. Like, y'all ain't got no program. I don't see what's going on. So it's like, so to, so to, yeah. so, so to make that straw man argument that like the young artists are like faulty or whatever the fuck and it's like yo what y'all not what y'all aren't also factoring in is these old niggas ain't been on tour in 20 years yeah, like look there's at- pent up demand for these old motherfuckers so when you look at it in a vacuum when Lil Baby just went on tour with Chris Brown last summer and I went and seen it. Phenomenal show. And before that, he went on tour with Little Dirt. And before that, he went on tour with 42 Doug and the City Girls. And, like, he he's he's basically shot his load. He spent himself. Dirk, the same thing. Yeah, these niggas is doing... F- Didn't the baby have an issue here where he was... Had to get a jet to come here to do dope yeah. shows, then do another show. Like he was the doing same two day, festivals the same, the same day. day. It's like that's the way it go now. At the end of the day, Fifty Cent is on tour right now because it's the twentieth anniversary of Get Rich or Die Trying. We're talking about one of the best albums of all time. If Snoop decides to do a doggy style tour, but it's like the chronic, it's gonna tour, sell out in minutes. It's just what it is. No one's going there with the anticipation of New Fifty. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? We just like, heard no, some new 50 on Nas album, and this shit is terrible. Like, no one's going to the to the, Wack, to the Wu-Tang show with the attitude of, yeah, I hope I get some new Wu. Right. Yeah. We don't need no new uh, mathematics. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I don't know what today's <laughs> math is. I got my fill of all yo, the mathematics I can state. Real, the calculators now. Real <laughs> shit, God, the earth might be flat. I don't know what the fuck yeah. the math is today. So... so so, it, it, you, you see these, uh, you see these fucking, you know, the, these narratives get thrown out there online, and then you know, depending upon what side of the coin you on, or who you like, or who you rooting for, or whatever, whatever, then you start to see the fans perpetuating this shit and reposting it, and this and this, and I'm just like, there's so much context missing from this shit. Like, what are y'all talking about? The latest one is Kodak got a million dollars for this song with Six Nine. The one before that was, uh, we gotta wait to hear what Thug say about Gunna. Thug says about Gunna. That's AI. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, at the end of the day, why even kick off these narratives of y'all going to believe what y'all want to believe and have y'all allegiance to what y'all want to have y'all allegiance to anyway. Y'all really don't care. It's just a, it's just chatting. It's just a talking point to carry motherfuckers miserable ass day forward in between them fucking being on live uh, playing Call of Duty or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying, with I, somebody in Idaho or just being generally annoying on another blog site. I'm not going yeah, to respect that tweet. I don't care. I, yeah. I respect it. Yeah. You ain't got to justify it. I don't care. Straight up. All right, cool. Your yeah, I, opinion I'm, got my opinion. I'm interested to see what, what life is like in the next five to ten years. Because even like you just mentioned the AI shit. We, we've just got... Somebody the other day was like, yo, man, I, I just... I, I just 
thinking back, I, I I love life when AI just meant Iverson. Yeah, like shit. AI just meant Bubba Chuck. Like that's all it stood for. And now we've gotten to this weird point. We talked about that in our first Patreon. If you're not on the Patreon, please patreoncom slash trp. We talked about plug, that. Plug plug. If we talked about that in the first Patreon show the other day, it was like the internet is making it to where. All of the like the life rules and life hacks that we kind of learned are getting undone yeah. because of the internet. Because people are like circumventing, <laughs> right? The, the seriously, yeah. Real like sure. back in the day, if if someone you know in your family offended you, you called the family meeting. Right. And y'all would sit down and figure that shit out. Now somebody in your family offends you, and you go on live. And then your people have to relate a message to the cousin that <laughs> right. don't even got a social media. It's just, it's, you know, Tata was talking about you it's a lot. It's just weird, man. It's all said you a fuck nigga and, yeah. and your shoes corny. It's all strange. So I wonder what it's going to be like in five to ten years where you got, like, somebody the other day made a very good point. I don't want to hear no AI music. I think that's the weirdest possible thing you could, like, I don't want to hit, like, Timberland was all hyped that he had a song mm-hmm. with Biggie. And it's just like, no, 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 no. You have songs with Magoo. <laughs> Magnum. Magnum. You don't have no song with me. Yeah. Cut this shit out. And, and shout out to Young Guru, one of the super most solid people in the music industry. He called out. He said, this is corny on a low level and dangerous on a and high a high level. Le- it's a weird, like, even when Jada said, I made real songs with Big. You no made, made up. No made, made up, up shit. shit. That was really Biggie rapping that they took yeah. his verse and put on some. But I don't want to hear a fucking child artificially, intelligently fucking make a Biggie verse yeah. where Biggie fucking Smalls, Christopher Wallace did not write these words. This is weird shit, man. This is strange. Very strange. Did you see that Bean said that he's going to use uh, AI to put his old voice on his new album? I think I like that. I respect that. If he write it and just have EI recite it. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm unsure. I'm unsure on how I feel about it. I miss the old beans. I think I miss the old beans, but I live on earth. <laughs> new beans is what we got. I don't like new beans. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like new beans. <laughs> I agree with you. Compared to old beans, yes, old beans is a fucking juggernaut. Yes, I agree with that wholeheartedly. My thing is I live in reality. Yeah. Like, the same way I just told you. I'd love some new Biggie, but but Biggie's dead. Yeah, so we, didn't, we didn't chopped up all them hidden file verses. All them joints is done. That shit, we didn't make four albums out of that shit. them blown into every zip drive <laughs> he had. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no, all right. Let me see. Ain't, ain't <laughs> nothing on this deck. <laughs> no, no more riddle riddles? <laughs> ain't no riddle riddles. Yeah, so, I don't know. Like, all yeah, that other I, shit. I, 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 no. If Beans wrote it and recorded it, it's because still, it's, the spirit of it is still being. But, but to, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But to me, it's just like auto tune. If you go in and rap, you put auto tune on it. It don't sound like you. So eh, that's a good argument. I would like to hear it though. I would have to. I, I want to hear it first though. If uh-huh. it could really sound like, if it, I don't know. I'm for that. I'm not for the. I'm not for the making up the shit. I, but if it's already. Drastic. I haven't made my mind up on it, but I'm willing to give it an That's open That's what I'm ear. saying. I got to hear. I'm willing to give it an open yeah, ear. I, I, I want to hear. Because if it's any of that AIE, almost, it ain't, it's almost beans. It's but like beans exactly. light. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I'd yeah. rather just take the new beans yeah, than, yeah. Than, than almost beans. Yeah, if it's, yeah. Beans was a ferocious rapper. He is a ferocious rapper. He's still beans. He was a ferocious human. Yeah, beans is just, uh, you know, I, I say it all the time, and I don't know if beans is going to hear this. I think beans' cadence is the closest to Biggie's. And people don't get it till I explain it, and they kind of like, damn, you're right. Beans could really rap, and you could tell he really studied Big's format and his flow. At the, at the same time, though, it's like things change. Times, you know, go like the, 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 the world don't stop. It continues spinning. And, you know, you have to just exist in reality. You don't think I'd like to see Mike Tyson get one more shot, but Mike Tyson is 55 years old. It's just, it's over. Floyd Mayweather is done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, Floyd Mayweather fighting Ninja Gating characters yeah, and YouTubers. Like, straight up. Like, you you can't artificially intelligent <laughs> put Floyd back to when he was making fight Arrow Floyd. Making fight Arrow fight yeah, Arrow Spence. Like, <laughs> like, you, you have to just exist in reality. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a tragic ending to the whole situation, but because it, it's, it, it, what happens, you do it, and it sounds good. It's like, 
Oh, are you just going to do that forever? Yes. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> we we are in the we are in the full throttle. This is like year three or four of get the bag culture. Anything that makes money, niggas are like, let's Damn, do it. But it's crazy. This gave me an idea. Kevin Hart might need to listen. Now, if that works, maybe they maybe you can make your own auto tune of your own voice. What do you mean? So when he performs, he sounds like that. Sounds like what? It sounds like his new it voice like instead of his instead of his present day Beans voice or whatever like that. So you know how they got the plug ins, our little baby voice don't sound like that. They got or the, like when Travis Scott performed, he got that robot yeah. Travis Scott voice on his microphone for live performances. So what if I can put the Beans voice? The Beans voice on the live show. But you said Kevin Hart. To the best. You said he fucked up with the best. I'm quite sure that's a that trillion was a, that dollars. Was, that, was, that was a good one. Okay, I see what you're saying. I'm quite sure that's a trillion dollar. Uh, <laughs> Uh, b- uh, investment right there. Yeah, because Fifty don't sound like himself on the new Nas. I, don't, I didn't know that was Fifty. I had to go back and look at the credits. Yeah, I'm like, who the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah he it, sound like Casanova mixed with Uncle Murder. Yeah, definitely. He his voice don't sound the same. But it's a magic. You go get all them people. Uh, it, it might fuck. It might fuck the live industry up. But shit, we'd be rich. <laughs> right. Mad, Mad, you get Frankie Beverly his old voice. You go back and give uh. Yeah. DOC, his voice. Imagine yeah. DOC finally being able to do No One Can Do a Better album. Yeah. Frankie Beverly at this point just need a voice. Yeah. Hook <laughs> yeah. we'll anybody. We'll yeah. Take any voice you got. Yeah. I don't know why he's performing. He's just for the Simpsons. Whoever. Just, just hold the microphone. Like, yeah, I know you. Some people got them songs, but you ain't got to say nothing. <laughs> Big don't even perform things in nightmares. He just hold the microphone, let the crowd yeah. do it. <laughs> you know what I saw today? Since we on music, we get stand music real quick. Uh, and I, I normally hate this guy on Facebook because he's got like all these rap posts, and he he's one of those people where it's like he has a huge rap following, mm-hmm. but he's an idiot. Gotcha. So he just it's constantly like just dumb shit that he's saying or doing. But he had a a a, a, a poll and. I thought it was very interesting to see the the results. So his, the poll was, who has a better mixtape career, Meek Mill or Jeezy? Jeezy. Right, that's what I thought. <laughs> Jeezy. But it seemed to be a lot closer than what I thought it would be. I mean, that, that, that Flamers, yeah, you know I mean. And I, that's why I'm like, I'm like the DCs, the Flamers, but then I'm like, but Trapper Die. yeah. Streets is watching. Is just, um, you know what I mean? Can't ban the snowman. Yeah, I, I, I think is. I, I think, mean, I, I, I see it. I, I, I can see it. Meek might have um, more depth in his mi- mixtape catalog than Jeezy. I think Jeezy got like two mixtapes that you could put up there where you talking about I mean, like p- potential. Like Trapper, like like Trapper no Dye ceilings. Is perfect. Like so perfect far album. going, no ceilings. Beans, uh, Public Enemy. Yeah, uh, Fifty Cent is the future. future. Like and Trapper Die too. It's it's certain Jones that's just like yeah. out of this world. I do think Meek Dream Chasers is it two or three that broke the the that piff two two. two. That's up there because that was the one that had the lean with it, rock with yeah, it. Yeah, that, that had seven yeah. bombs on it. Yeah. Like DC, that was, Jazz, that, been an that was an album. That yeah. was an album. Remember, we didn't know if DC Four was an album or a mixtape. Yeah. Remember that? It was like mm-hmm. I don't. This maybe it's on. <laughs> okay, I, <whatever. laughs> but you, I think what it is is the impact of the flavors. Like Jeezy mixtape run, he was already Jeezy. Meek was becoming Meek doing that. Flavors yeah, but run. like Flamers didn't leave the tri state. It didn't, but it did. It, it's just, it did a lot for him. It did him. a lot. It did a lot. It put him in front of Ti. It put him on the radio, on constant, regular rotation. That not was mix the first show time rotation. I heard that. Got him a remix. Party. Got him a remix yeah. with Lil yeah. Wayne. Like it, it, it did a lot. It did a lot for the for, for Philly and the Philly culture. Oh yeah, that, it, that's it, what it, I'm saying. I'm like, I, I, that's probably that's why I can see. I can see it being. Close. I think. I think it was me. Just like all first when I seen the pictures, I'm like Jeezy. But then when I see all the mixtapes listed, I'm just like. Meek do got a lot of flamethrowers and a yeah. lot of DCs and shit like let's that. Look at, let's look at Jeezy full mixtape. Because I want to give him his proper credit for we really dissect this. Jeezy mixtapes. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Trap or Die. Thousand Grams. That was a good mixtape. The Last Laugh. That was a good mixtape. Um, the Streets is Watching. That was the first one. The real is back. The real is back. Is up. Burr, 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 burr. Um, the real is back too. Uh, it's the world. Boston, Georgia, and Diego. That was with the guy from. Uh, I forget the hell. What the hell is this guy's name? Uh, 
some artist that Jeezy was working with at the time that didn't really go nowhere. Um, Double XL did a joint in 2013, ranking Jeezy's mixtapes from best to worst. I Am The Street Dream 2006, I don't even remember that. The Prime Minister, I don't remember that either. The Last Laugh, that was a good-ass mixtape. Um, I think Ballin' was originally on that uh, Was on that mixtape. Um, Can't Ban The Snowman. Boss Your Life Up Gang 2013, that was with... Uh, with the, with the Detroit niggas with payroll Giovanni and them. Mm-hmm. Thousand Grams, 2010. Um, took mixtape instrumental. Streets is Watching, 2004. It's the World, 2012. Uh, Trapping Ain't Dead, 2009. Trapping Ain't Dead was crazy. Real is Back 2. Uh, Trap or Die 2, by any means necessary. Classic. Real is Back, and then Trap or Die, 2005. So, yeah. Jeezy's got a solid, like, seven. Got like a solid seven. <laughs> Look at this <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, late nineties fashion was crazy as shit. About <laughs> the fatness of these jeans. <laughs> I can't believe we wore them fat ass jeans. Like, yo, jeans used to be humongous, man. That was a funny time. Bro. I was a senior in high school slash freshman in college. I was like five nine, one hundred and forty pounds, wearing a size thirty eight. Double wide, fat ass jeans. You want to hear the craziest part about that time period is I legitimately was like a big man. Like I was wearing 5X and shirts and yeah. jackets and shit. My Tories bowl. Tories all day. Jeans was a 54, 56 yeah. in waist. And I looked the same way in those clothes. <laughs> so I like, like, it, it just, it's amazing looking back on it. Like, like, yo, straight up, when I put on clothes from a couple years ago, they're huge on me. Yeah. So going back to the early 2000s when the clothes were, like, drastically uh. oversized, it, it's unbelievable, yo. I found one of, like, my polo rugby's at my dad crib recently. Yeah. It's a 6X. Yo, I put that joint on, <laughs> nigga. Nightgown. Dog, nightgown. I look like a ghost. Remember, like, the old <laughs> movies, the ghost just had a sheet on? Like, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Scooby Doo ass ghost. <laughs> like, straight up, yo, clothes was big as shit back in the day for no fucking reason. I remember man. going to a white party at 30th Street Station, man. I had on a, like, a 2X lilac and white polo blocked fucking uh, polo shirt or whatever, and some. 30, size 38 white polo cargo shorts. Like, you know, I've, I've I got made four it. belts on trying to hold these <laughs> shits up. You know, I've made it my mission in life to never attend a white party. Oh, yeah, I'm done. That's one of my, like, goals. I'm I'm done. I'm done, done. Because the white party thing is, like, one, it's just obnoxious. Two, it's, like, there are, like, three quintessential outfits for black people to wear (laughs) to the white party. It's the nigga that's in the white polo with white jeans with white forces. Mm -hmm. Then it's the middle-aged nigga that's got on, like, the white linen set. The white linen set is nasty. The white linen I with the front. That was the that was the go to. That was the go for Unk for Unk John. At, uh, <laughs> when they just had Cavanaugh's, mm, remember yeah. that? And they and they always wear those boat shoes, them white boat <laughs> yeah. shoes. Then it's the super old nigga that's got on the little Bruno Mars hat. Yeah. The the white set leisure set leisure set. <laughs> yeah. That's them old players be trying to be trying yeah. to pay your girl electric bill. And yeah, shit. he got the drive-through Bluetooth. Like, what the <laughs> <Yeah>. shit? <laughs> I hate them niggas. Are you working the Arby's drive-through with that shit? Yo, <laughs> uh, what little bro said? Go ahead, Frank. <laughs> it going, Frank? Go What's ahead, up, Frank? Frank. <laughs> oh, Frank, I'm in the streets, man. Look at this. I got the Bluetooth. What's up, Frank? <laughs> Silly as shit. Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't ever see me attending a white party, man. Uh, we used to live for the white parties. Yeah, no, that was it was a vibe around this time of the year too. Right around this time mm-hmm. of the year, cuzzo birth, uh, cu- oh, cuzzo birthday July. We'd be at the Ooh. Horticulture Center or Cavanaugh's or or Octo, uh, which is now what the fuck is Octo oh, now? Uh, what is Octo now? Uh, Morgan Spear. Oh yeah, Morgan Spear. What do you hate more, white parties or sneaker balls? Oh, the, listen, the sneaker balls is, is is burning me up. Like, the white party is at least a part of the nostalgia of me being, like, a young man coming of age and aspiring to be, like, in the mix with the older niggas that was moving and shaking. The sneaker balls is just egregious because yeah. y'all sneakers stink. Yeah. Y'all suits be terrible on top of that. It's almost like they go get, like, breakaway suits. <laughs> Like you know, <laughs> you know, how you go to Party City and it'd be like a whole costume yeah. with a bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like people. At. I like to deal with the shitty outfits. 
But people don't go out of their way. <laughs> they're the shitty outfits. Because you're supposed to go all the way out on your sneaker. I could have saw your face. You're supposed to go. Because you're supposed to go all out on your sneaker. Right. <laughs> so it's like, you can have any kind of book. Oh, them drawings fire. Yeah. No, everybody going to the Golden Goose store and getting some dirty ass sneakers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. For 450. Yeah, they're so getting some dirty ass sneakers for 450. It's a fucking pandas. Yeah, pandas. I, I seen a sneaker ball drone where it was like, yo, everybody had on like panda dunks, yeah. horses, royal blue Jordan ones. I'm just like, that's when you like, use your firm and go on goat and get some smoke. <laughs> get you some heat. Get you some use smoke, your firm. Man. <laughs> but they just like, it ain't. <laughs> one of my homies, that was his name, he just found out what a firm was. <laughs> Oh shit! Yo, he went on another day. He was like, "Yo, I'm pre-qualified for eighty five hundred. I'm gonna lost his mind. Yeah, My you mega. Yo. <laughs> yeah, you go down the firm yeah. rabbit hole, man. You look up. You got seventy two no. counts. No, <laughs> nigga, nigga ordered motherfucking five master. <laughs> Just ordering dumb shake shit. weight. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shake weight and shit. Yeah. I'm gonna lost yeah. his mind but with the firm. Like the sneaker ball was 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 dope at first because. I remember head. the first it got, it got into the wrong hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. It got into the wrong hand. Because the Holy yeah, Grail was supposed yeah, to be on your feet. Yeah. Now they put weird outfits yeah. on with a pair of sneakers. It's Sneaker like, balls is like like the meteor for Meteor Man. Like, like, like when Meteor Man had it, he was building gardens. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. The Golden Lords got it and just took over the community. Yeah, the sneaker balls fell into the wrong hands, That's man. Is, yeah. I remember the first couple of sneaker balls I saw was like some good sneaker motherfuckers from like the groups. Yeah. 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 I was seeing it where it was like everybody popping up with like a, a traditional black tuxedo and then you see like prelude Kobe's. Yeah. You know, Supreme Gold up tempos, motherfucking uh, gray and white Easy Seven Fifties, uh, Turtle Dove before the re-release. Like it was like everybody yeah, had that shit. Smoke. Yeah, you that like, was the point. Yeah. It was supposed to be formal attire with grails, with, with right. grails on, exactly. grail sneakers. Now I, I, I saw one joint that looked like the bitch had on like scrubs from the hospital, <laughs> with some I'm like, yo, what are you? Is your client? Like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? I'm pop up in this joint on my lunch yeah, break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sneaker ball thing is really, really. Yeah, they they they, they, they destroyed the sneaker ball. Yeah, I, I, to the point I don't ever see me a thing. I, I wanted to have a sneaker ball because yeah. I know I'm gonna get a sneaker ball two yeah. thumbs down. Yeah, that's yeah. six thumbs down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any more thumbs in there? <laughs> like seriously? Yeah, because I really I wanted to do one because of course us three sneaker heads, all right. our friends are sneaker heads. So I knew it'd be like some shit, but they just wore. Jules popped up in my fucking wedding with a suit on with the Serena uh, off white. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's five thousand dollars in a fifty. <laughs> yeah. It's just like that's at a at a random wedding dinner. Right. So it's like you come to the sneaker bowl, you supposed to. You know what I'm saying that's like I literally was like, yeah, I, I told him like I I I was keeping my just dons on ice, like just in case one of these niggas <laughs> pop up with a sneaker <laughs> ball. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming through my fucking suit with the fucking blue just dons, like, and it just that's how my Yeezys. That I'm I'm I'm, I'm a bust them out. For the for the for the brunch, if you if you haven't already, get your brunch ticket. Like yeah, straight up. It just the sneaker ball thing has definitely gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yo, yeah, yo, that's that's leaving a bad taste. Yeah, we losing recipes, yeah. y'all. Yeah, in two years, in two, yeah. <laughs> in two years, two years time, you niggas have smoked the sneaker ball, man. <laughs> Damn shame what happened to the sneaker ball. Oh man. Outside of that though, we here, the realest podcast ever. It's a Sunday, yeah. dropping on Monday. I want to discuss something that's been going on. You can't escape it. It's it finds you. It's finds you, yo. The biggest issue this past week was this girl. Is her name Charlie or Carly? Carly, Carly Russell. The, uh, the name already just Every feels... Carly I've ever met is out of her fucking I'm, mind. I know two white girls named Carly from school, and they were both like arsonists. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to Firebug. you. Fireball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up, it, most people named Carly are trouble. Yeah, out of their mind. Uh, th- Carly Red. You oh, know what I'm I saying? forgot Carly Red. Yeah, Carly Red. Um, that's all I got. That's <laughs> enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all the evidence we need. <laughs> Carly Red and the two white Carly's. <laughs> <Carly's right. laughs> that's a strong triumvirate right there. <laughs> Hard to argue with. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man! All right, let's get into the situation. So, 
Have you gone through the timeline of what all happened? Hey, I watched the press conference. Police was on her ass. Oh, you watched the press conference? I, I watched, watched the press, press conference. conference, yes. Okay, so you was in the I'm, I'm deep. <laughs> deep in the net, nigga. Deep in the net, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucking the motherfucking uh the the special in, inspector or whatever the fuck for the police department came up there with a lilac suit on with yeah, a pink tie. So that's my moment, nigga. Yeah, yeah. I'm going big viral yeah. today, bitch. <laughs> big viral today. <laughs> so I'm wearing the shit I wore to the sneaker ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he pulls up or whatever. The the chief of police is there. Then like the chief inspector comes and he you know he come he got his, the chief the chief of police got his regular police attire mm-hmm. on. Boom. He give a little preamble. Hey, yeah, uh, we're here to let everybody know today, you know, everything that went on with this case. Carly has been, you know, returned safely to our family. But in our investigation of all of this, we found a lot of different things, some inconsistency, stuff like that. Chief Inspector, what the fuck is going to get up here and give you guys mm-hmm. the whole rundown on that? So he pulls up popcorn player, pop his yeah, motherfucking collar. Yeah, let me tell you what this yeah, dumb yeah, ass bitch did. Yeah, what the boy say? Uh, you think I'm here to play around? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> he, and, he, and he did not play around. Yeah. He basically you know, uh, went through her whole story, the timeline itself and everything that, you know, interacted around it because they had GPS surveillance. Bro. bro. <laughs> GPS surveillance You're on the not whole getting shit. away. <laughs> yes. When you got phones <laughs> and cars and all of that shit, so they said she's on she's on a the highway. They they pulled a highway. There's a highway cam where she was, where she pulled over at initially to make the call. Oh. And then that camera followed her, and then they matched that up to the GPS positioning from her phone and a third-party mobile app that she had on there, something to do with her job. I'm going to tell you how that crazy That tracks it is. her GPS position. I'm going to tell you how crazy it is because I know because working in logistics. When you got most of these apps that you add to your phone, and so many people don't even realize it when they do this shit, most of these apps, you have location services on your phone. 99 times out of 100, you don't disable your location services for most of your apps. That's why most of these apps, when you download it, it will say, ask app not to track, ask to track while using app, Mm -hmm. ask to track all the time. (laughs) If you don't disable all of that shit, not a, your Chick Fil A app. Know where you <laughs> at? <laughs> we know where you at. Bing, it looks like you're near a yeah, Chick Fil A. Yeah, like you about <laughs> point seven miles. I need some tennis. <laughs> <laughs> where you going, man? I see you. The line is not long. Can you I, can pull I, up right now. Can, oh. can I interest you in a mint milkshake? Yeah. <laughs> you know you got nineteen thousand points. <laughs> that shit on us. Hey, you, you, know get a, you can get a grilled uh, sandwich. You get a catering order. Yeah, yeah. So. The the whole issue started. She said she was driving on the highway, and that she saw a baby yes. walking alone on the highway. Not the baby, a toddler. Not the baby or a little baby. Baby. A baby. A baby. Be clear. Yes. Because you see the baby or and, little baby or Beatrice or Beatrice. Or Beatrice. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> yeah. But she said she saw a baby walking on the highway. Now Which, a baby that nobody else saw. No, no one else saw. I I know for a fact I've seen young people just out like at the store in an aisle where it's like yo where your mom where you, where you, where you, who you with what's who you are yeah. like a baby on the highway it's is crazy. stopping everything yes. that that's shutting everything down busy highway nighttime she she pulls over or whatever so they got the they got the highway cam or whatever from when she pulled over and I'm like mm-hmm. oh that this is not going good so they got it where she pulled over and then you see her creeping on the shoulder as she's having this phone call and then they're basically synced up the 911 call to the motion on the vehicle <clears throat> yeah there's a there's a baby here probably like 3 or 4 years old it's like a toddler <clears throat> wearing a white shirt no pants a uh, Caucasian child, whatever, whatever. It seemed to just be walking. They like, okay, nine one one dispatch is like, okay, can you cut on your uh, hazards for us? Blah blah blah. What mile marker are you near? Okay, cool. Blah blah blah. In the span of the time from when she made the initial call to when she hung up, she traveled six hundred yards. Okay. The length of six football fields, and basically what they're saying is. There isn't a toddler on earth that could travel 600 yards in four minutes or whatever the length of this phone call right, was. Right. So I that was the I can't travel. That, so that was so, <laughs> so that was the first red flag. Like 
this is either this kid is the road runner yeah. or like something strange is going Remember on. That strong ass little baby, <laughs> yeah. years ago, the yeah. son of you seen. Yeah. So 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 that was the first red flag. Boom. So then you know the police pull up. No baby. No Carly. What the fuck? Her car is discarded. Uh, personal effects in there. Whatever. 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 She's nowhere to be found. So this basically looks like. You know, a kidnapping, mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whether in, in in this case initially, an authentic kidnapping. Like, she got kidnapped. But based on the amount of traffic that was traveling on the highway, there's no way that she gets kidnapped and nobody sees the shit. Mm-hmm. So then we're just going back to just we we getting back to some common sense stuff or whatever mm-hmm. like that. So in the midst of all of this or whatever the case may be, they decide let's look at. Her web history. Let's go to her job. Let's let's see if there's anything awry, anything panic that you know we might need to look at. Like can, I, can I pick up right yeah. here? Yeah. Okay. Because I pulled this up. Okay. okay. <laughs> so in the days before her disappearance, they went to her job and they basically did a search on her computer yes. of the queries that she was looking up. On July 11th is at 7:30 a.m. She googled, "Do you have to pay for an Amber Alert?" I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> this is starting off weird. <laughs> right there, where it's just like, Damn, bitch, <laughs> bitch, what? <laughs> like, could you imagine your kid? What the man alert's going for? What the man alert's <laughs> going for? Let me go on firm. Let's see if I can find that second. Oh, they ain't on a firm. Let me go to Klarna. Let me go to Klarna. See if got something on there. Like, dog. You know, Apple got a new paying for it. They might, I might got to go there. You know can what I'm saying? Can you imagine calling them after your kid been abducted and they like, oh, we going to need a nickel before we can put it on the Oh, table. you want it right now? On 95? <laughs> oh, man. No, man. No. That's a cash app. They like, we can put it on 95 for 200. If you want the Jonah to go there by phone, that's a stat. You like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell them don't be don't be wandering off. You know what I'm saying? Now that it's a stack on the line, I did, I did tell him don't be wandering off. That was that was big on my. Oh. I, I know I hammered that home at least three or four oh, times. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you got now you making a business decision. Oh. <laughs> what if your kid oh. get to come home or not? Man, go for me for it. You snapping when the kid come back? I spent my time on you. On your little ass, you gonna walk the fuck <laughs> like dog. Yo, funniest shit ever. Yo. One, back in the day, my, my this, this is when my girl Ooh. was a kid before I knew her. She said her mom was ready to put an Amber Alert on her because she just left the block. Like, she's like 10, 11 years old. Mm-hmm. She's with the older kids from the block, like 16, 17. I'm like, well, where did you go? It's like blockbuster video. <laughs> like, yo, your parent is organizing a search party for you. You didn't walk around the corner to the plaza to go to blockbuster yo. to see if they got the princess fucking diaries or whatever the fuck on DVD. I remember my curfew. I had, uh, it was so funny. I can't believe I'm telling this story. I was in ninth grade, right? And I'd worked summer, Greenfield all summer. So I saved up money. So you remember Movado watches? Nigga. Yo, listen, right? So I went to the check cashing place on 69th Street. And they had Movado watches in there around, you know, the little fake neck and yeah, all the yeah, little yeah. fake wrists and <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. all the little jewelry. So I'm like, yo, I want this watch bad as shit. I bought a two-tone Movado. And dude cut me a nice little deal. He was like, yeah, man, give me $65. You got that, John. I'm just like... I think these are more than sixty five dollars. Whatever, <laughs> at least like a little eight hundred or something. Whatever. So I bought the Movado. I was hype as shit, man. I don't to this day. I don't know if it was real. Most like it was fake. It was definitely fake. Yeah. But I remember I had my shit set. My curfew to be in the crib was ten p.m. Right. I go to fuck out. I'm out. I'm chilling. I'm looking at my watch and shit. Whatever. I ain't tripping. I'm like, it's only eight o'clock. I ain't tripping. Man, I came to fuck to the block. When I tell you, like, I I got home and I'm like, yo, why the fuck is all the lights on? Doors open. What the fuck is going on? I opened the door. My pop, like, grabbed me and pulled me in the house. What the fuck is wrong with you? You've been outside all night. Your mother in there worried, crying, about to call the people. Then go in there and talk. And I'm just like, yo, what's going on? My mom had, like, tears in the face. It was, like, 1 in the morning. Oh, shit. My watch is stuck. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't had no cell phone. <laughs> I'm like, it's 9.30. <laughs> I'm early. I'm on time like a motherfucker. Yo, what the fuck was you doing all that time? I was at home, girl, crib, just chilling. <laughs> but I ain't really paying this shit. No, I'm looking at my watch like, oh, it's 8 oh, yeah, no, 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 oh, no, no, it's 8.30, oh, it's 9.06. I seen 9.30. Let me get the fuck to the crib. It was 9.30 when I left her house. <laughs> 9.30 when I got in the house. Straight up. Punjabi boy, did you wrong <laughs> shit, man? 
Yo. <laughs> 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 I wore that Movado for like three weeks. No, on 9.30. <laughs> I can't give a fuck. I got my Movado. Fuck y'all. Right. Yo, straight up. My mom was pissed, oh, though. Oh, God. But yeah, she Googled Ambler Alert June, July 11, 7.30 a.m. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., she Googled how to take money from a register without being court. Bitch, <laughs> you, you, you can't siphon the shit out of the register. You got to open it. Yeah. On camera. Most registers have a camera aimed directly at them. I remember years ago, we had, you know how you just know knuckleheads and shit. Mm -hmm. We chilling in my crib, me and a couple of my homies, my close homies, whatever. And, you know, we just know motherfuckers, whatever, whatever. You know, you around the way. Doorbell ring and knock at the same time. That's the first <laughs> indicator that something ain't right. When you hear ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding, 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 so my homie jumped up. He run. He look out of John. He, you remember when? Uh, so you, you, I don't know if you ever watched uh, Sanford and Son, but it was a John when they was chilling with some chicks, Rollo and Lamont. Like Lamont had got his own place mm -hmm. and to get away from Fred because Fred was being annoying. Yeah. And they was chilling with the chicks. Like Lamont, Rollo had one over here. Lamont had one over here. And it was a knock at the door. And Rollo jumped up and looked out. He was like, Oh no, because <laughs> it was Fred. Yeah. That was how my he was like, Oh no, I was like. <laughs> What's up? He was like, dog, this fool, I'm not opening in this door. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, who is it? He tell me who it is. I'm like, oh, open the door for him. He's like, I'm not letting him the fuck in here. I get up. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Come out and look. This nigga is standing on my step with a clear trash bag with a cash register in it. <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit. I'm looking at him out the window like, nah, no, man. We, we not home. <laughs> we not home. And <laughs> my head. Go that way. Go that, yeah, no. go that way. Take your take your crime scene evidence <laughs> somewhere else, please. <laughs> Nigga snatched a cash register and put it. You know, because most of the bags in the store be them them see through clear trash bags. bags. <laughs> 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 and hoofed it. Straight Figure up. this shit out when I get where I'm going. Yeah. How to take money out of a register without being court on July thirteenth. Same day now at two thirteen a.m. She googled Birmingham bus station. I said, what in the civil rights? Like, what? Like, what? You have a car. <laughs> you have a car, don't you? You have a license. What the fuck? Then on that same day, 12 minutes later, she Googled one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville with the departure date of that same day. So she was trying to get a bus ticket from Birmingham to Tennessee that day. It's looking bad. This is some 1950s shit. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bus ticket from Birmingham. Remember Paul Mooney said, ain't you ever heard of Greyhound, bitch? $19. Go to <laughs> anywhere you want. <laughs> then later that day, about 10 hours later, she Googled the movie Taken. And that's where the memes and all that shit yeah. just went completely out, out, of this, out of this world. So then this is where it picks up now. She sees the baby, allegedly. She calls 911. She disappears and is reported missing. Now the family and everybody comes into the play, the boyfriend, the mom, the dad, and they all look alike. I can't believe this bitch did this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, like, you know, there is no, there is no look to being like, you know, on a spectrum, I guess, or any of that, but they all look a little off. Yeah, yeah. The mom looked really off. Really off. Really, really off. Where it was just like... It's been a bad week for moms because the mom of that sassy trucker that's locked up in Dubai, she looked a little off, too. Yeah. It's been a bad gonna get, week we for moms. That. That's another wild-ass story. But, um, yeah, she was missing, and the family was going crazy, and it, it kind of took over social media from what I heard. Like, everybody was in, interested in the story because mm -hmm. you got a baby on the highway, you got the woman missing now. You, you got, got the perfect storm of factors that make this shit interesting. You got a missing black woman. You got a legit baby. You got uh, human trafficking. You in the deep south, like you got all. You got the perfect storm of factors that creates this just gumbo that people are just every day, just like at the on the edge of their seats, like what's going on? What's going on? What's the update? What's this? What's this? What's this? Is y'all gonna take? Is y'all gonna take this serious? Y'all gonna find this black girl? Cause y'all ain't find the last black girl. It's like all of that shit, like all this yeah. social pressure that got created as a result of. The, the factors of the shit. So the allegation is she was missing for 49 hours. The allegation is she was basically taken and put into the trailer of a vehicle. Yeah. Then she was switched out of that and put into another vehicle 
where she saw her captors or whatever. She said that the woman who was part of the kidnapping crew was very nice to her and gave her cheeses. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I. Yeah, I'm a sucker for cheeses. Yeah, man. <laughs> You got cheese. You got any chips or hoy, yeah. man? <laughs> <laughs> now we got an ice cold Pepsi. Yeah, <laughs> ain't even got to put the cups on. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just we just kicking we it just at, that, at that point. We just hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Did you fry up one of them grilled cheeses <laughs> for me, player. Like put a slice of that smoked turkey on there too. <laughs> <laughs> You want bacon on your grilled cheese? <laughs> nah, I don't fuck with that, that pork. You know what I'm saying? You got, shit, some, you got some turkey? Shit bad for you. Like. <laughs> <laughs> on Saturday, July 15th. Well, let's, let's not jump ahead now. Um, a large group of volunteers organized by her parents assisted in the search and effort. On Saturday, they offered $50,000 for a safe return, which included $20,000 from an anonymous source, $5,000 from Crime Stoppers, and then $20,000 from... Uh, Keller Williams uh, real estate. That sounds like forty five thousand dollars to me. Twenty twenty no twenty twenty five and five. Oh twenty twenty five and five. Oh fifty fifty. That's what oh, I thought. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I thought it was two twenties. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put up fifty racks to try to find her. Um, on Saturday, July fifteenth, and ten forty five, she returned home on foot. About forty nine hours after she went missing, police received a call around ten forty five, no- notifying them of her return. Officers and medics responded. Russell was taken to the hospital. The investigation is not over. We're still working this case. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, they're just trying to uncover every piece of evidence and help them account for the 49 hours that she was missing. And that's pretty much where the, the story ends. And now social media and people have every, you know, because everyone's a conspiracy. Everybody's thing. a sleuth. Everyone has ran wild with their speculations. Oh, she was cheating. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, you know, I... <sighs> I've seen some elaborate hoax pulled <laughs> for people to go cheat. You know what I'm saying? That, I just have. I've seen some crazy ones. I've seen bitches make up all kinds of wild shit. I've seen niggas. You, I know motherfuckers that just every week come up with a crazy ass hoax. Yeah. I told you, I know motherfuckers that go get banned from the hospital. Yeah, no, I was in the. You know what I'm saying? You know, a phone don't work in there. Yeah, Tria, his service is <laughs> nothing. You know what I'm saying? I was like, Einstein. Ain't no service <laughs> up there. Like, the um the one that's annoying me the most is that people like everything now is like mental health. Mm-hmm. That's the go to. Anything yeah. that happens, oh, you know, mental ain't right. You could mental. be a complete fuck nigga or a complete fuck girl, and it's like, oh yeah, but consider her mental health that would lead her to do some shit like this. And it's just like, whatever happened to just you was on some bullshit? Yeah, you an you asshole. Got court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just a jackass. When did that go out the window? Because we too woke, man. As a society, the vast majority of us is so woke that it's making other people that that are more reasonable and down the middle making us more conservative as a result of it yeah. because we don't even want to be associated with all the bullshit that's on the far left of yep. y'all are overly empathetic to everything. Yep. Sometimes people are just on angles and get jammed the fuck up. Yeah, you was on some nut shit. You don't Google Ambler Alert and motherfucking take it and <laughs> bus ticket. The bus. You was on some nonsense. On some bullshit. You was on some fucking flim flam cheating, doing whatever the fuck you... And that's the part where it's just like... If, if, if your chick going to do some shit, whatever. Yeah. But it's like, don't bring the National Guard into this shit. Now I'm on CNN, <laughs> right? Looking crazy. I'm up there looking like I'm about to take my talent to <laughs> South Beach. I'm <laughs> doing a fucking press conference and shit. Whole time, you just out here playing the fuck around. A couple of years ago, that shit happened. Um, my cousin, uh, my, my young cousin or whatever like that, um, she's she a little green, you know what I'm saying? Grew up in California and shit like that. She come out to Philly, get her a little boyfriend, he run that dick all up in her, you know what I'm saying? Punch maximum dick inside yeah. of her. She decides, I'm running away from home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Fuck grandma's house. Yeah. I'm running away from home. Yeah. She disappears. She basically leaves her phone at, at, at grandma's house. Don't, you know, so, so that nobody can contact her or whatever. They doing all this research to figure out where it is. My, my older cousin, her mom, goes online 
and basically puts out her own Amber Alert. Keep in mind, she's got like a huge social media following, puts out her own Amber Alert and all of this uh, whole shit. <laughs> the shit blows the fuck up, go oh, everywhere. Fuck up. I'm scrambling, calling people and all this and all that. The whole time, she know exactly where the girl at, but she didn't did this shit to embarrass her for making her fucking go through all of this behind the scenes shit looking for her. So she makes it seem like she's missing when she was just at the boyfriend house fucking for the last week. Yeah, <laughs> the, crazy, no, the craziest part was that the, 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 the nigga... The nigga who was punching dick down her best friend, like, man, that bitch getting pound town. That bitch at pound town on the other side. <laughs> Been in pound town for a week. Like. Yeah, d- them Jones where people get people involved. And then, yeah, like, this. It's always about like this. Me, I, get this, I hit people. We, we is all trying to find it. Like, we're, we're human beings, right? Unless you just, like, a soulless killer, the thought of somebody missing is. you. you it make your hair stand. Yeah. You, you think oh, 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 make think of the worst. You uh, you you just like God did. Like they always say on the joint. Like if you don't find them in forty eight hours, it's, it's over. Yeah, like, we all yeah. seen Peyton fool. We know yeah. what happened to Lil Sunny. Like, so to bring people into it and do that's the part for me, especially when these people are like making it up, where it's like. You, you see these situations online. Yo, we can't find my sister. Can y'all, you know what I'm saying? We, we last, she was last seen at this. She was last. This is her known. This is where she be at. This is where she be around. This is all of this. Can y'all repo? And y'all in the streets, handing out, doing all this shit. Then the little girl come home and it's like, oh, she's safe, y'all. We asked for privacy. Yeah. This is a time of healing and yeah, reflection. She, she, she and it's just she, like, she was no. eating dick for three days. Where the fuck was she at? <laughs> we got all of that. <laughs> what the fuck you mean? We in the streets singing, we shall overcome. No. <laughs> We got on matching t-shirts and shit. <laughs> like, we want to know where the fuck she was at. Bring back our girls. Yo. <laughs> Yo, straight up. Put my hook on hold for two days. <laughs> I'm to the point where now, this is going to sound horrible. <laughs> if, if, if it's a teenager, I'm not reposting that shit. Like, because the teenagers is wild. And they got all of these different hormones and all of this different shit and mixed messaging and all this old shit. And then they being taught one thing at school. Then they peer group showing them some other shit. Then they put, they, they, they're all over the fucking place. I know what it's like to be a fucking teenager. And I was fairly grounded. If your teenager goes missing, they fucking like, it just is what it is. I'm not fucking <laughs> commandeering my social media to help you find your teenager. That's yeah, out I, having I, sex. I, I went to that shit. Uh, what, what, what was that? My, my, my niece, same shit. She was at Pound Town. Pound Town. Pound Town is claiming so many victims, dog. <laughs> God, <they're just> crazy. <laughs> Are you not indoctrinated in this? Yeah. You don't know that this is going on? <laughs> yes, I know what's going on. I'm just trying not to get fucking canceled before I got trapped in place. If, if this is what it take, man, you know what I'm saying? If, 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 if this is what it take, cancel me. Oh, you don't me. know what's going on? No, then I know what's going on. The rent, man. <laughs> yes, I know what's going on. No, no. I, 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 I agree. I don't really get into the, like, I've never posted anything. I, just because I don't, I, you know. If they, if they 14 to 19, I'm not, I'm not sorry. And I'm it's not, not sharing. I, I hope you find them. Yeah. I just, I'm not helping. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I helping the search yeah, part. A little child, I'm helping. Like, two I'm year old, a, I'm, I'm on the street. Yeah. Two year old, I'm in. Two year old, I'm on the street. I'm, I'm putting. A, I got the staple gun. I'm putting up posters. Yeah, the whole yeah, nine. Because yeah. who the fuck took a two year old? Yeah, exactly. Puberty era, pre puberty era. Yeah, man. You I, ain't, got, I ain't got, got nothing for, for you. They yeah. fucking. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a lot of situations where it was like it was all this like fan, not even fanfare, or more so, more so. Uh, uh, all this energy for find this person, this person, this person. And then you don't hear nothing else. So you're like, yo, whatever happens to this? Oh, yeah, they found her. Yeah. And it just be like, what you mean? Oh, yeah, they just found <laughs> what her. What you mean, Joker? <laughs> like, it's a, like it's a pair of hush puppies. Like, they're not found at all. I, I, mean, I just went to the mall. They was right in there. Like, I, it's, I, it's, it's, it's be, what, what happens is the person that took them to pound town is panicking now. <laughs> like, oh, you got to go back. I, yeah, I'm the last person that everybody's seen you with. You got to go. Yeah, back. that shit on the news. <laughs> news. Like, uh, babe, I don't know if you know. You might want to uh, wipe that cum off your ass. You on the news right now. They looking for you. Who's they? The city. <laughs> the city is looking for you. Apparently, you miss it. Mm-mm-mm. So yeah, put a GPS monitor on your teenagers because I'm not helping the search party. The crazy part is with all of the things they got now. When you talk about like again, um, 
the 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 monitoring of of devices, mm-hmm. um, location uh, sharing, location like, sharing. You could put a secret app on that shit and and, and fucking the, and get the, with the little the little tags and mm-hmm. all of that type yeah. of stuff. I Some, mean, they, 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 these little kids smarter than us. That's what it is. <laughs> they understand the technology yeah. better than we. Yeah. As they go, oh, listen, man, listen. I used to go to school of YouTube. I go to school of TikTok now. Yeah. You learn more on TikTok than YouTube. Yeah, so, 30 minutes on TikTok, you be motherfucking putting up ceiling fans, motherfucking putting uh, LED light signs yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw the joint the other day. Dude was on house arrest, and he, you know, you what they call it's a T word they use tether. Tether. You know, you're supposed to have the tether on or whatever, whatever. So he he had to pay restitution for like a crime he was mm-hmm. in, involved in, but he was on house arrest. So. He can't mind you. The, the restitution was like twenty two thousand dollars or whatever. Oh whatever. god! So he had a bad job. So long story short, the nigga he wound up showing up with all the bread, like the whole rest, the whole twenty two, the whole twenty two thousand or whatever. So they was like, "Yo, you've been complaining about paying the restitution for like the last three months. You've paid nothing to this shit. Like, what's going on?" They do some digging. See, the nigga hit a jackpot at the casino. Right? Yeah. He hit the jackpot at the casino, but the judge is like, how the fuck do you hit a jackpot at a casino? You're supposed to be on tether. At 1130 <laughs> at night. So they go do the joint. They realize the tether never was out of the out of the play. Well, long story short, he had figured out a way to get the tether off. Without it going off, without right. tripping no longer. Yeah, he was, <laughs> <laughs> was out just throwing them bones, nigga. He's like, y'all want this 20? <laughs> want this <laughs> bread and, I, and it's funny because normally they don't even ask. Like, when you show up to pay court costs and fines and all that shit, they didn't know. They don't really add. They be like, how you want to pay this cash, credit card, whatever? You show up with $55,000 in cash. They like, all right, get the money counter. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Bing. like, they just run through the bread. They say, yo, where you going to get this money? Because you've been bitching about bread. <laughs> nah, I mean, I'm just, you know, this is what I do. <laughs> They had that nigga. Oh, they they showed him it. <laughs> yanking the big stick on the slot machine. Oh, this nigga crazy. <laughs> Dude, my are nuts, man. But yeah, uh, it, to wrap the situation up, you j- lying is one thing, and and nobody's perfect. People lie, people make up shit, all that. Yes, we do. But once you get to where you you know how the lie becomes so big that it's just like mm-hmm. yo, yo. Once, once your county, and then your city, <laughs> and then the state, your county, and then your region, yeah. and then the country is involved. You got involved. your council members and <laughs> shit on TV, yeah. Like once people are using this as like a platform for political career advancement, your lie has gone too far. It's going on way too far. See, I told them that we needed better cameras on the highway, and this wouldn't happen. And they pulled the cameras fast as shit. I seen her pull it over. I said, "Oh goddamn, <laughs> this is this is bad." This, so these are my this is my favorite tweet from the whole shit. Somebody said, uh, "That girl faked her kidnapping. Now her nigga got twenty thousand followers. You just sent twenty thousand bitches his way. He's never coming back." Then the update was, "It's at thirty five k now, y'all. That's fifteen thousand more bitches." Yeah. That shit has sixty something. <laughs> <laughs> I went down that rabbit hole. Like, <laughs> nigga living a high life. <laughs> This is just scary, yo. Top Carly Russell searches on Google right now. Carly Russell timeline. Carly Russell parents. Carly Russell age. Carly Russell birthday. Carly Peasel, Carly Russell employment. How much does Carly Russell make? Like, motherfuckers are just digging yeah. all into your shit. Like, yep. mm-mm-mm. Carly Russell is nuts, man. Yeah, but uh, on some real shit, you know, if, if this is um, a mental health related thing and it's not just her, you know, um, wigging out because a nigga stuck too much dick in her ass, um, I do hope that she gets the help that she needs and um, doesn't do no goofy shit like this again because you left a crazy trail of crumbs for uh, people to figure out that, you know, this is most likely a hoax. Carly Russell reward money, which top 63,000 is not being returned to donors. Despite being found safe, Crime Stopper, <laughs> Crime Stopper says investigation still pending. I don't know. We still trying to figure some shit out. You know what I'm saying? 63,000. And they're never going to get to the bottom of it because her and the family aren't talking Mm-mm. from what I understand. So it's like, it's just going to be like, yo, whatever we could figure out. Like Jesse Smollett went down with the ship, which is who they comparing her to. Yeah. Jesse Smollett, all he, they said, yo, bro, 
just apologize and yeah. say you sorry. Yeah. This is wrong. Yeah. I didn't do what y'all yeah. saying I did. They like, yo, the nigga is saying he got videos of you eating his dick. Yeah. Like, what, like, what do you, like, what do you, like, <laughs> This this is not ran. This was not a random attack. This was your boyfriend. I'm gonna be driving a dump truck for the rest of my <laughs> there life. You go. Like <laughs> back to pound. <laughs> back like to it's always some, it's oh, always some pound town shit. Like <laughs> you even know you were in a la- this is an elaborate hoax. Just apologize. He went back to court and got sanctioned, got charged, got put on probation and everything. Oh lord, you was tripping, Mister Smoothie. Yeah, you was tripping. <laughs> I, did, I maintain my oh, innocence. Mr. Smoothie was definitely tripping, man. Yeah, he, he definitely was going down. Just apologize. He was no. in jail still standing <laughs> on that shit. You have a collect call from, hey, man, don't believe that shit. <laughs> <laughs> some African bro. niggas are some liars. You know they some scammers. They done scammed me. <laughs> you have a collect call from African niggas are some liars. <laughs> You Pick know up you, the fucking phone. We have a collect call from you. Know you can't trust no Nigerians. <laughs> you nigga. <laughs> oh, we have a collect nuts, call from them niggas. Ain't even no actors. They some extras. <laughs> How you gonna believe them oh. over me? You have a collect call from you. Know you can't believe them African. <laughs> fuck is wrong with y'all? Jesse went to jail, dog. Yeah, man. Yeah. Protecting the law. Straight up. Straight up. Carly Russell might end up in jail depending upon how far this shit goes. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of big figures, public figures, is pressing for the uh, some kind of legal actions to be taken. Yeah, because, I mean, once you bring in that many people into it, it's almost like uh, uh, people who claim rape, and there was no rape. You, yes. There needs to be something in place for you to not waste all these yeah, resources and Just time. Like, like, even like uh, when you go to jail, I plead guilty. I get lesser time because I save the taxpayers' money. Like, you ain't saved nobody. How, let, real quick, you just made me think about it because you're talking about the tax person. Yeah. How do you feel about police, uh, uh, like, settlements with police departments? You know that comes from, like, the taxpayers. And oh, yeah, like for that. sure. There was a time, it's still kind of present now, but it's not as bad. There was a time in um, Baltimore where the state of Maryland would just literally just set aside a certain amount of money, like $50 million a year for police settlements because they knew that they had a police brutality problem. There, there's a situation in Orangeburg, me and Jules talking about it because, you know, he's down in Orangeburg, mm-hmm. South Carolina. The cops got called because the, the, the call was there was somebody banging on the doors of an apartment with a gun. Okay. So the cops pull up. There's two black guys outside. One of them is in his 40s. The other one is in his early 50s. The one that's in his early 50s is like he's disabled. So he's kind of like off a little bit. The cop gets out the car. He tells, yo, on the fucking ground, on the ground. Because he's thinking they got a gun because he's still coming around the car. The one who was in his 40s, he laid down on the ground like, oh, I'm on the ground. The one who was in his early 50s, he put his hands up coming around the car like, man, ain't nobody got no what the fuck is going on. He's like, on the ground. He's like, ain't nobody got nothing. Trust me. I was on the-. So he says, on the fucking ground. So he's like, all right, man, all right. So he's like, you're not listening. On the ground. The guy gets down on, on like his fours and he's getting down on the ground. The cop comes up and stomps on the back of his head face first into the joint. Bust his whole shit open. Like, on camera. You Bruh. see it from the... So he's stomping the back of his head. So he's like, yo, you stomped on the... What the fuck? What are you doing? He was like, you goddamn right out there. You're not listening. So they put him in cuffs, whatever. The cop and the other chick go around the car. So they like, look. He's like, yeah, he has something over here. Da-da-da. They pick it up. It was literally just like a stick. Yeah. Like, it was like a stick that he had in his hand. He, like, kind of just threw it as they was coming up. But the, the sergeant comes up. The sergeant is black. Black woman. Of course, these are white people. Black woman, he's telling the sergeant, like, sergeant, like, what happened? He was like, I pulled up, whatever, we got a report of the gun, boom, boom, boom. They, the first one came around the car, he got on the ground. The second one, he, he had something in his hands, and I could see him throw it. Then he had his hands in his pocket. So we got a report of the gun. It's like, I don't know what he threw. I don't know what's in his pockets. But you can clearly see on the body cam and on the car dash cam, he came around the car with his both hands, hands up. up. Yeah. So his hands were never in his pocket. So it's like... Why are you lying to the... You're lying to the sergeant on camera about the shit. Because most people's instinct is to lie to get out of a jam. Right. So he says, yeah, no, nah. he had his hands in his pocket. I didn't know what was going on. Da-da. So mind you, they get the guy off the ground. He's just like, you bust my whole face. And like his whole shit split, leaking or whatever. So the cousin comes out and the cousin is talking to the cop like, 
You know, because they realized like it was no gun. Yeah. Nobody in the apartment building. They had everybody out there was like nobody wanted to press charge. Jules was like, I know exactly where that apartment building right. was at. He was like, they said nobody wanted to press charges. So they like take him out of the cuffs. There is no gun. There's no warrants. None of that. They letting him go. So the cousin, mind you, he's a little disabled. The cousin is like, yeah, so we we gonna figure out this. Like, we gotta go to the high. Like, look at his his whole shit is split. Yeah. So he like, yo, um, do you got a card? Like information. The cop was like, Oh, we don't we don't handle cards. As he, as he says that, the sergeant just, like, looks at him and looks at the guy was like, we have cards. So the sergeant pulled the <laughs> card out, gave him the shit with the badge number, all that shit. She's just looking at him like, the fuck, nigga? Like, so long story short, he got fired two days later. Yeah, for sure. When they fired him two days later, they realized he had been fired from two other police districts. Oh, for shit. The same shit. Jules, like, the one, the one joint he got fired to was in the very next town. Like, he's in the very next line. And I'm like, that's Ooh, what happened. over here to yeah, Orange and I'm going to go over <laughs> <laughs> But the guy, he wound up getting a settlement for 650000 for the cop stepping on the back of his head. And they were saying how the, the lawyer was like, D- these situations, it'd be cool to see him get justice in that third. Yeah. But it's like, at the end of the day, that money's coming from the taxpayers. And I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> and the same joint, you like, certain police... Uh, uh, districts throughout the, they be having like almost like a, uh, like a slush fund. like a slush joint like yeah we know we sending out settlement bread all yeah, we, year like, like Baltimore was so bad it was basically like yo if you have an interaction with the police you getting a settlement you getting at least uh, 300,000 because then, they was just running wild and then that Freddie Gray shit happened and then that was just like alright we gotta redo this whole everything and, and the lawyer was basically saying how it's not really gonna change until that money starts coming directly out of police budget yeah, out of, the, out of the, uh, the, the police budget or the uh, police pension yeah 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 I was just like yo I mean the way yo like if I show you the manner in which he stepped on his head yo it was just like it was so egregious that the it fact was, that we're still having like just rampant police misconduct and police um, brutality after Freddie uh, Freddie Gray, after Tamir Rice, after George Floyd, it's like yo y'all like y'all literally didn't learn nothing. Like nobody didn't learn shit. Niggas learned for about sixty days. They were scared and then they went right back to stepping on niggas. Yeah, straight up, like motherfucker. Oh, this is broad daylight. Oh. I'm thinking this is like some nighttime shit where they had like a legitimate. Oh, he hit him with the curb stump. Oh. American meat stump? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Like he like stepped on the back. Yeah, that's head. disgusting. Yeah. And it's just, is I don't know. I was just seeing the whole thing where it's like taxpayers pay for this kind of shit. And one joint I peeped last night, the, um, it was a girl that was trying to be a cop, um, but when she was 17, she got arrested for arson. Mm-hmm. She set her boyfriend's car on fire because he had did revenge porn on her, like released videos of yeah. her. She was mad, whatever, whatever, set his car on fire. And he, now she's 28 and has been like a model citizen, lives good, good credit, all that. And the cop was just like, yeah, the, you'll never be a cop. Like she wanted to be a cop. It was like, you'll <laughs> never be a cop because of the, the arson joint. He was here. And I'm like, yo, the rehabilitation thing is like so weird because it's like you put people in prison with the mantra of we're going to rehabilitate them and make them better for society. But on the flip side, if you have something from when you're young, you could never be a police officer. Yeah, all they're trying to do really do is disenfranchise people. They yeah. just basically like, oh, you get into trouble for whatever it is, whether it's a gun, drugs, whatever the fucking case may be. It's like this fucking uh, felony is essentially like a scarlet letter to disqualify you from the potential pool of candidates to really do anything. And it's like you can't have a career in law enforcement. You can't have a career in politics. You can't have a fucking... Um, you know, uh, certain administrative positions or corporate positions, stuff like that. Right. And that's really all it is. And it's like, yo, people have realized, certain companies have realized, specifically in like um, in Texas and in Florida and stuff like that, it's like they, they're more felon-friendly areas yeah. because it's like, yo, our police fucking, uh, you know, our police and our judicial system was so corrupt once upon a time, any of us could have ended up with a fucking felony. Yeah. So it's like, we can't penalize 30% of the population because they got a fucking felony. We won't have the uh, a hiring pool to even pull from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, seeing them videos just be kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, they'll pull up with this energy that, that's just so, like, it makes zero sense. It's straight authorit- authoritarian, um, you know, energy. And it's like, yo, you better do what I say or this and this and this. And then it's, it gets um, excused because then you have a segment in the population that says, well, why you didn't just comply? Like, you have those motherfuckers. And it'd be black people and Hispanic people in that 
population too that be like, well, I mean, you know, I mean, you just need to just comply. You know what I'm saying? Like they have these like right wing talking points to where it's like, yo, like I'm literally like doing nothing. Right. <laughs> like I'm just minding my motherfucking business. They got a call here for whatever reason they got the call here. We get stuck holding the fucking bag. I comply and I still get curb stomped. Right. That's crazy. I remember telling the cop when that whole shit happened with, with the, the thing with the credit cards. Mm-hmm. And the consumer. I remember telling the cop like you like because the sergeant was like, yo, why he not in cuffs when he pulled up? Yeah. And the boy was like, I mean, I like he's not under arrest. Right. Yeah. He's like, not under arrest or detained. The sergeant was like, yeah, but I mean, they, they didn't have a warrant for my arrest. They had a warrant for like uh Talk to. I forgot what the fuck it's called. It's okay. a different type of warrant. I forgot the name of it. But he was like, well, well, he, he, you know, he needs to be in something. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the bull was like, I mean, like, you know, we didn't apprehend him. Right. And that was the job I was telling the sergeant. I'm like, yo, you know, I pulled y'all over. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, not trying to be funny. And I told him, like, you've been a cop for how long? He's like, I mean, I don't understand the relevance of that. I'm just like, you've been a cop <laughs> for a significant amount of time. If you a sergeant, how many times have you been pulled over by the right. criminal? Yeah, I think I might be in some trouble. Let me holler at you. Yeah, I think I, <laughs> I, think I might have a warrant for a pull over. How many times does that happen? Zero. You know what I'm saying? So I know I'm on an island probably. Mm-hmm. So it's like, think about that for a second. And you would tell the black cop was just like, yo, this is just like strange. Yeah. And that moment right there describes the problem that a lot of people have where they use like their job sense instead of life sense or right. common sense. Because it's like, yo, you're so hard up trying to do your fucking job. You're not paying attention to just the basic decency of being a human and the things that I'm literally saying standing here in front of you, you're still got your cop hat on and you just like, well, I don't understand what that means. It's like, just have a regular conversation, yeah. motherfucker. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're be, be, being black and existing like out in the world. It's a tough gig, man. It's a, it's a tough, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough gig, brother. Straight up. Cause it's like, you got so many X factors that you have to worry about. It's so many things that just go on that just are above your control. They're out of your they're out of your control at all times. You never like not trying to be funny. That specific day, I had it all mapped out and I did everything <laughs> right. to a T. I went to work and did overtime. I went and got my cut. I picked Lee up from the airport. I did everything I was supposed to do and ended up with 13 cops surrounding me and her. And was just like, wait, what? From multiple different police districts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From the district of origination and everyone in between Philadelphia. You see what I'm saying? And, and if I at any given time just react with emotion as opposed to like a level head, yeah. all hell breaks loose. Yep. Because of my size, my, my persona, all of that shit, it just goes extremely left at any given moment if I just decide to just get loud. Yeah. So, you know, I had to be, like, super calm and cool, you know. Yeah, to keep these crazy niggas cool. She had to keep Lee cool. <laughs> she was starting to get all fucking emotional. And it's just like, yo, I had to just, like, because if it go left, I know what's happening with me. Yeah, they're going to Rodney King the shit out of you. Yeah, it's just... Duh. So it's like people, you know, you, you, you see all these different people and races and all these different things, and it's just being black is just, that, that shit is rough. Tough, tough That's gig, a tiring man. gig. How do you feel about the black girl in Dubai from Houston? So apparently, because again, deep in the internet, mm-hmm. apparently some ex friends of hers have chimed in on the conversation on social media saying that they have proof that she is out of control, abusive, that she's done this before, that she has a problem with men in general. They have a video of her attacking one of their husbands on a vacation in DR, I believe it was. And they just basically saying, like, they stopped being friends with her because she would get drunk and then have, like, these fucking crazy, like, anger episodes and just attack people and shit like that. So they're like, yo, she's no victim. Whatever they saying she did, she did that shit. And these are people that, like, know her. So... Initially, like, you know, in seeing the case, it's, it's a yeah, let's, let's lay the ground. Yeah. So I don't know if people really understand. Yeah, so initially in the scene, the case, there's this girl. I don't know her real name, but she's, she's a sassy trucker or whatever the case may be. And um, that's her know, name. That's her name. That's her like social media oh, profile okay. name. The sassy trucker, or whatever. She's a woman that, you know, works. We talked about on Patreon this you. weekend. Talked, to, talked about, you know, the CDL drivers, whatever, whatever. She had a job car hauling recently and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, she's she's real big on TikTok. 
um, as an influencer in the trucking world. And, you know, she's one of those, you know, lone females that you see at these truck stops and all these different things, whatever like that. She's driven big rigs. She's done car hauling, like all different, you know, CDL level driving. She's pretty much, you know, done it all the last like three or four years or whatever. And um, she went on vacation to Dubai, was there with some friends or whatever. They rented a car from somewhere. Damn, bring me a soda. They rented a car from somewhere. And the car got damaged. Mm -hmm. They returned the car, or whatever the case may be. She uh, supposedly left some things in the car. She comes mm -hmm. back to try to retrieve her personal effects from the car. And the person tells her that works there, give us $5,700 U.S. and you can get your things. Um, if not, then you just got to follow a dispute with the police department, whatever, whatever. It supposedly turns into a shouting match. She, he's shouting at her. She, she's shouting back, whatever, whatever. The police get called. It's illegal for women to shout at anyone, especially a man, in public mm -hmm. in, in the Emirates. It's against the law, and it's punishable by up to two years in prison. So she's now been detained in Dubai for the last two months with this case pending around her yelling at this man, and he's basically going the full out. He's going full mm -hmm. sin on prosecuting this situation um, and trying to, like, you know, have her remain in jail. It's become an international incident now. That's people, fall. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> that's <just> a terrible <laughs> people idea. Are, people are trying to, uh, there's, a, a, I guess, a community leader, Quanell X, from her home state or whatever like that, that um, spoke out about this and saying he's trying to get in contact with the U.S. Embassy in Dubai and the consulate here in the United States mm -hmm. and all this different stuff. And they're just basically saying, like, you know, they have this law system that's based on theocracy and, you know, it's, it's, you know, Islam in itself is the law of the land. And in Islam, men are elevated above women as community leaders, head of household and all of that. And essentially, it's a situation where, you know, a simple misunderstanding turns into this whole big thing because she's traveling abroad and didn't know the laws of the land. We talked about it a couple weeks ago on Patreon. Jules like, yo, y'all are becoming like Drake and Hope where there's a TRP episode for everything. Where it's like, yo, traveling outside of the country and acting like you in the country will the have you, you not at. leaving the country yeah, you that you know went where to you go at, man. Because America has a leeway where it's like, America's the only ghetto-ass country where you can just smoke An crack unreasonable on the amount fucking of leeway. street. You can shoot dope at Kansas City and you, Allegheny. Won't nobody bother you. You can get on the bus and bust a bus driver in the back of the head with a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> just go on with your day. Yep. It's the only place. You can you argue with a bus driver on the highway on Roosevelt Boulevard and fucking cause an accident that kills a person and injures 19 people. Yeah. Because we have too much freedom. Too much. Too much civil liberty. Straight up. And with that, most people don't know how to handle this shit. I say it all the time. Like, the way y'all act and the way y'all conduct yourselves when you go. Like, did you know you can't even bring avocados into New Zealand? Is that one of their like chief exports or something like that? Because of the the the, the pesticides that grow. Oh, it'll disturb the account. It'll disturb the uh, the environment. Yeah, yeah. Bitch almost got booked with four avocados at the airport. I just want some avocado toast. Yeah, yeah. I just want some avocado <laughs> toast in the morning. No, bitch. Yeah, you playing yeah, a lot uh, of games. Hands, <laughs> hands. Yeah. <laughs> Police commissioner Dubai uh, made a statement too. Like, she's not detained like that. She just can't leave. Until the court is over, case you know they they just spin the narrative <coughs> like she's locked she ain't up. detained. She just can't yeah, go nowhere. Can't go nowhere. <laughs> yeah, until like, we say so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she ain't in jail, but she can't leave. She can't leave here either yeah. until the uh, until the case is over. And they said they got more evidence. It wasn't it wasn't just shouting. Yeah, at the end of the day, when you and I, I, I you know, I've been there, and I told y'all how I felt being there. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel real civil over that day. Yeah. And what I mean when saying that is like, yo, being here, I have a feeling of, at, at times they can get, you know, violated, like we just talked about, yeah. but you know what the Constitution is. You know the amendments. You yeah. know number you, four. You know the five. framework of what the fuck is supposed to happen if something goes left. Like, you, even down to y'all, like, we, we made the joke this past week about pulling out your phones and recording shit. You be feeling like, if I film this, I'm going to get some justice somewhere. Right. Somebody going to care about yeah. that. Yeah. Over there, you film it, nigga. The fucking king will see that shit and say, that's nice. Kill him. <laughs> like, that's yeah. how that shit feels. Women just got the right to vote, like, two nigga. years ago. Nigga. You know, they can't even be, like, you... 
you can't be overly exposed. No. Like in, I, in Abu Dhabi, they will straight ask you to leave the mall. Yo, you got the rose. Sis. Yeah, you get smoke for looking at another man's wife. Yeah, stone him. You over there and try to talk to a chick who's up over there, her brothers, all that. They'll come stand around him. What the fuck is you doing? Yeah, this ain't that. Yeah, we, we heard you, Meat Mill. <laughs> and how he rap. <laughs> Fucking niggas chick. Ain't that what y'all talking yeah, about? Yeah, you ain't gonna come here and fuck our nah, wives. Nah. <laughs> yeah, she got Hussein Ahmed uh, another six months. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, her third cousin is intended to marry her. <laughs> He's worth four hundred yeah. billion. <laughs> yeah. So when I see y'all go to Miami and do all that shit y'all be doing and fighting and yeah. mumbling and jumping off shit, tearing shit up, drag racing, doing donuts. Trust and believe me, you can go and rent all them cars over there. You ain't about to get out of fucking control with them cars over there. Yeah. Seriously, they got cameras all up and down the highways, just taking pictures and photos of every motherfucking thing. Yep. I tell you how crazy this shit is. I learned this. We in the Rolls Royce, me and Jules. We left from Stephen P. We was in the rape. I pull up to the light and I came over the line into the crosswalk and you can see like every car, everybody is just like, and even him and the passenger's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, what you talking about? He was like, dog, back the fuck up. He's like, but I mean, they done already took the photo and shit. And I'm like, what you talking about? He was like, you can't go over the line into the crosswalk. And that's some shit we got here. Mm-hmm. Like that thick line that's at the red light, you're not supposed to cross it. But motherfuckers be in it. Yeah. To the point where traffic crossing the street got to walk behind exactly. your car to cross the we street. We got signs at intersections that say, don't block the box. Don't You'll block have the somebody box. blocking the box at every corner yeah. of the box. And over there, <laughs> that shit, he was like, yo, this shit like a $500. T-. And he was like, man, I got to work over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was bitching and it's Pins like and needles. over there, you you can't even do that. Yeah. I'm talking about everybody who was crossing the street was looking at and mind you, we not like in the crosswalk. I'm talking about like I got like I'ma say I got like the front tires on the line. So the engine part of the yeah. zone is over. And people are like, nigga, what the fuck are you doing? They looking in the windshield like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you is, cool? You all right? You got, you got some of that Hennessy? <laughs> Yeah, you better know where the fuck you at, man. And o- over there, there's a real, real, like, I, my, my homegirls just came from Malaysia and Singapore. Singapore, you can't spit on the ground. You cannot spit on the ground. Yeah, they still whipping your ass with the fucking pole. You spit Kendo on the... Kendo stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the time the, uh, the <laughs> Sandman. Sandman, nigga. Yeah. He used to take you to ECW Arena yeah. quick over that job. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, you, you, you can't be hating. And I know people are like, Oh, who? Because I saw that on Facebook the other day. Oh, I mean, who? You, you playing with me? I'm gonna get right at you. And I'm like, you is not. No, you are. No, not. you are not. All that sassy, over emotional, do what I want. Who gonna check me and all that shit? That shit doesn't work nowhere but America. That shit don't work in Mexico. That shit don't work in Central America. Nigga. That I, shit don't work in Brazil. I know motherfuckers that done been caught with unregistered guns and been out of jail that evening. Yeah. I'm not joking. In my, America. my best friend, his first case, he got arrested with a gun in his pocket. <laughs> he was out of jail shortly thereafter. Over there. <laughs> a, ask Future and DJ Esco about why they named that mixtape 56. Yeah. Nice. Esco had a little bit of weed in his luggage. Like a gram. Yeah, less than a gram. 56 nights in jail. And ain't no, oh, you go to the weed jail. He yeah. was like, I'm in here with like killers. Yeah, and I'm in the big jail. Yeah, because it's just called jail. <laughs> yeah. Over here. Because, it's just jail. Because our laws are set up in a way that's such a crime deterrent mm-hmm. that when you motherfuckers violate the law, y'all all go to the same place. Straight up. You don't have the liberty of, oh, I'm going to soft jail versus, like, gangster jail. Like, no. I know for a fact. Me and my homie got pulled over. We had weed on us. The cops gave us the weed back. Yes. Here, man. Yo, y'all not selling crack, are y'all? Same shit uh-huh. happened to me. I had a cop give me my weed back. He said, what's this, like, 14 grams? Oh, you can have that back. Nigga. Straight up. Yeah, we the guns and bricks police. Yeah, that's what he told me. He's like, we look for guns and coke and heroin. If you don't got that shit, get the fuck out of here. Straight up. Yep. He took my man had razors because he couldn't split Dutches. He took the razors. <laughs> I'm going to take this because I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what you, you are. I've <laughs> <laughs> been listening to too much Nas, nigga. <laughs> Listen to that fucking A-Train rap. Get your ass out of here. Over there, it don't work like that. So all that pop and fly, I'm going to turn. No, the fuck you is not. I'm telling you, they will take you Think about the difference in the law. We had a situation here in America that unfolded like a year and a half, two years ago. A restaurant owner, I think it was in in Dallas, fucking put all his money into this real nice restaurant, black guy, whatever the case may be. And they was was in there twerking and standing on the tables and all of that. He like, yo, can y'all please 
Stop twerking on my tables. This is this is a classy establishment. Blah 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 blah. Social media dragged him mm-hmm. for saying something. This is my shit. I set the rules of engagement in this motherfucker. That's how out of control we are. The person who invested the money and is operating this thing and employing people from the community is not allowed to say what the rules of engagement are for his establishment yeah. because, in the words of y'all, a little turkin ain't never hurt nobody. Yeah, you hating. You hating. Mm. You a nut ass old head. Fuck your dress code. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how out of control we are. So, so it's no surprise that a motherfucker go overseas and then get jammed up for some goofy shit. Like mm-hmm. it just is what it is. And it's like, yo, we be having these like these reality checks, I know and so. we're going to keep having them going forward because as the world becomes more globalized, where there's going to be more. Eastern influence on the West and more Western influence attempting to penetrate the East and all of that shit. And the presence of uh, Saudi Arabia and the Emiratis and all of that shit, as far as like investments in America and all of that, these cultures are going to become way more familiar with one another. And until we get that shit right, we're going to keep having these culture clashes where motherfuckers is going to find out that the liberties that you have here don't exist everywhere else. Oh, you see right here, the more you fuck around. <laughs> yeah, the Matrix yeah, is going. We're going to yeah. be updating the fuck around, find out Matrix every day soon come. Straight up. Like, you, like not trying to be funny, look at Brittany Griner. That's a celebrity. That's a star. She's going there to work for them. Yes. To be a celebrity for that fucking country on a basketball team. We pin hands. Yeah. Nine months. We don't even know where she at. Yep. Nine months for a weed pen. I'm telling you, I know somebody, his man had a wedding in, uh, 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 Puerto Vallarta, Puerto, Mexico, one of them, okay. some shit down Puerto there. Puerto Vallarta. One of them, yeah, yeah. one of them Puerto somethings. He went down there, they had a wedding, destination joint. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the night of the, uh. Of the uh, the night before, what's it called when the niggas go out? Oh, uh, bachelor party. They went bachelor party. They go out. Apparently, they get into it with some locals. The the federales, motherfucking cops show up, <laughs> tell them, yo, cool out. We're going to end it. Yeah. One of them sucker punched the cop. That nigga did not get married the next day. Yeah. He was like, dog, it was like 12 of them. He was like, it was like two of them that was still free at the end of the vacation. At the end of the whole joint. It booked for days. Goofy. Oh, everybody going. Like, this is not America. It's not like, oh, he draw, we're going to take him. Y'all get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no, you all going. Round these niggas up. They on dirt bikes. <laughs> the front of on dirt bikes. Put one of and these niggas on the back. And there's a nigga on the back of the dirt bike sitting all the way like Nino. <laughs> Put these niggas on the back of the dirt bike. We're yeah. going to come back and get machine gun yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. We're going to run them back and forth yeah. to the fucking jail. Did like, you see the whole situation that happened where they ran into the gate? Did you see that, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> it was a bunch of niggas on scooters in like either Mexico, Puerto Rico, one of them. But one of them crashed into the gate, and all the people came out. Or whatever. He was like, "Yeah, shit started getting tense." So he's like, "We left, and everybody just started pitching in cash, and we took it back." And he's like, "When we come back with the bread, they were so on angles. It was like motherfuckers walking around with max in her." <laughs> But they gave him the bread and everything yeah. was cool. It was just like, yeah, them other countries don't play the Can't goofy be games doing what that you we want, like, man. Yeah. Yeah, insurance is not transferable. Mm-mm. We don't know you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you just drawing. Like, you disturbing and our way. you just drawing. You disturbing our way of life. Yeah. And, we, and Americans have a way of imposing our will or attempting to impose our will on other fucking places that we go. Yeah. And... I'm here to tell you the natives of those countries are tired of that shit. They are tired of our propaganda and our bullshit and us trying to force our way of life on people. Like they're cool with their cultures and customs that exist on where the fuck they live. And we always trying to tell people just generally speaking from a macro space, like, yo, are you doing this wrong or this is wrong? And they, you got Quanell X on TV questioning the laws. Like the law been the law. Yeah. Nobody told her to go over there acting like a motherfucking park eight and falling victim to what the law is. Straight up. And the girl's not even in jail. She just can't leave. We got your passport. We got your credit. You can't go nowhere. Right. We got to sort this shit out. And if you, and what you, and what's being said is true, they got way more evidence. Like, roll the footage. Like, she going to find out in court. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Then when that happens, then all of the public sentiment is going to be like, uh, you know what 
what I'm saying? But the thing is, ma- majority of our women, not just black women, I'm talking about all women of a certain age can relate to various situations where they've been wholly out of control and nothing happened to them. Yeah. So, they, so they sympathize with, with the chick that's out of control that gets held accountable for it because they feel like, well, that could be me. Yeah. It's like, hey, stop being out of control. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't think people understand the customs and what, what it's really like outside of America. And we're not talking about going over the border to Mexico no. or going over the border to Canada. Yeah, we're not talking about North America. No, I'm talking about like <laughs> once you leave this, like the Western Hemisphere, yes. or once you leave this kind of, it, the whole shit changes. Like, they're still hanging people yeah. in parts of this fucking world. Saddam got hung. Not on some, we, we some <laughs> rebels, like the government was yeah, like, hang that yeah, nigga. hang him out of there. But you sons, say, Dan, the get sons him, get him dead. Him All right, cool. Yeah. They get stoned to death. Yeah. Yeah, go get, go get, go get Who got the VHS? I got it right here. They record a song. That's not Saddam getting on. Like, that's the way it go. These other countries, shit is suit. There ain't no liberal. They have low to none no of that tolerance shit. for our bullshit. Think about how we handle COVID. Just look at that. COVID was literally like, and I said it, the reason America faltered and fell so short was because, yo, you put Americans on the honor system. Yep. That's what you did. You can't trust these idiots. Are you high? <laughs> Italy was Russia like, had the mountain lions dog. Take all day if you want. Italy motherfuckers was riding around on dog. four strokes. <laughs> <laughs> man, 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 who the fuck else? <laughs> who that at? Mexico, they was getting it. It's hitting them with the, getting lashes. Yeah. Getting lashes. yeah. Italy too, they was whooping ass. Oh. Yeah. Italy, motherfuckers was riding around on four strokes with barbecue forks. Catch a motherfucker outside yeah. of my poker's bitch. Yeah. Get, get, get that fucking <laughs> They wasn't playing that shit. Italy was over COVID in three weeks. Yep. America's was still having Tootsie Roll competitions. <laughs> she was doing any fucking Florida thing. and Georgia flat out denied it Yo, even existed. What ain't no COVID? COVID. What COVID? We ain't, we ain't got no COVID. We ain't got our hotel and, and, our, and our hospitals Yo. rather because it ain't no COVID. Fuck y'all talking about niggas in here with, with just with the flu. Oh, it's a bad up. flu going around. Ain't no COVID though. These other countries. Ain't no pandemic, Jack. I, I'm telling you, dog. We was in the Abu Dhabi mall, dog, and I knew Jules was drawing because it was like, yo, you the biggest motherfucker in here yeah, with no yeah. mask. That everybody can see you, and it felt like that. And he like, and mind you, mind you, to make it even worse, me, P, and Step, none of us was stoved up. He the only one in the throw, right. full headgear throw with no mask. I'm just like, oh, you are so drawing. <laughs> That cowboy came up. He said, he looked, he said, I catch you again. $3,000. Damn. <laughs> Jules was like, no, nah, I'm about to go get a mask right now. He's like, the mask is this way. Go that way. Go that way. Yeah. <laughs> like, pay and fool. Yeah, go that go way. Go that way, my man. <laughs> go that, go way. that way. Jules was like, man, we just out. <laughs> I'm like, you, you messing me. Because <laughs> that's a dumbass lesson to learn. <laughs> you right. We messing me the fuck that's, out. That's a, that's a dumbass lesson to learn, man. And it's like, yo, yo. You, you don't research the place that you're going before you get there and know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Be prepared to get I'm hit telling, with a culture shock. Think about, think about getting on the planes and dealing with spirit and, and all of that bullshit. I flew on Qatar Airways. You had to have a mask on. The only time you was not allowed to have a mask on was when you was eating. Yeah. Straight up. The girl told the one, the one uh, girl was like a white girl. Cause you know, we, I was in the, the business class. So you had like the, yeah. the, the beds or whatever. So I was in the middle, but my joint wasn't, you know, they got like, they got like the super middle joint that's connected for like couples. Got it. So I basically, it's like a diamond. And then on the outside of the diamond, it's like a cocoon, a cocoon, a cocoon, a cocoon. But then the diamond holds like two couples. Got it. So I was on the outside of the, the one joint, but there's an aisle and then more cocoons up yeah. against the wall. So I was on the cocoon that was on the top of the diamond. So the couple was like on the other side of the wall behind me. So you can only see them when you stand up because, yeah. you know, it's like private or whatever. And the, 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 the stewardess came and she lit. I could hear her say, miss, this is the second time I'm making a reference to you about your mask without you eating. Like, you don't even, I haven't even served you any food. Right. Put the fucking mask on. Yeah. She's like, at the third one, I'm going to tell the pilot. And I'm sitting there like, you know, they going, like, emergency land this year. (laughs) I'm like, we're going to land here in Brussels. Uh, (laughs) This bitch got to go. This (laughs) This bitch is out of control in business class. She's got to fucking go. And I'm sitting up there loaded on Zinfandel. (laughs) Like, put the mask on, baby. (laughs) Put the mask on. What you doing? You want to go enjoy yourself? She's like, sir, take it. I got it. Don't thank you so much. I'm like, no, nah, because it's like, but you put the mask on. It's very simple. It's very simple. 
<laughs> and she, the, the girl was like, he doesn't even have a mask on. I'm like, I'm drinking a Zinfandel. <laughs> I'm following the rules. I'm following rules. That's the rule. <laughs> That's the way around it. Keep asking for food. <laughs> You ain't got keep your cup out. full. You ain't got to worry keep about getting chest full. Keep some motherfucking cash. You ain't got to worry. <laughs> but Dana, she said that shit. She said, if I got to mention it again, I'm going to the pilot. <laughs> the whole plane diverting. Like, these other countries, these other, they don't play that shit. They might not even land a bitch. They might send somebody to come get her. <laughs> got to like like climb down like, the ladder. Uh, what was the movie with John Leguizamo in there? They had to uh, connect to the plane and climb out. <laughs> <laughs> they going to make, make you climb yeah. the fuck out. Straight up, man. But you go to these other places, they don't have a declaration of independence. They don't have democracy. They don't have any of that shit. Like, you don't have a right to a fair trial or a speedy trial or any of that. Like, that shit fuck doesn't no. exist. The fuck you talking about? A jury of your peers. Well, your peers. Fuck you and them. What peers? We all got more money than you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck we your Shut peers. your broke ass up and take this 30 years. <laughs> your peers. Like, seriously. And I'm telling you, you know, once you start traveling around, you feel, when you land somewhere that ain't America, you feel yeah. I'm not in America. And the best thing to do is try to assimilate to the local culture as much as you can. You know what I noticed when I was in Dubai... Qatar, Abu Dhabi, all that shit. You don't see trash. Oh, hell no. So you know how, like, I've seen, like, I've seen people come on the bus, right? Me driving the bus. Motherfucker get on the bus with a, with a Popeye's chicken box, <laughs> right? But by, by Popeye's chicken yeah. box. <laughs> then you, you get to a stop and he get off the bus with nothing in his hand. Yep. You're just like, what the fuck? Box looking? full of bones. <laughs> box of bones and shit just on the floor. <laughs> Ain't none of that shit over there, dog. Ain't no trash on the ground outside. Good. So it puts you in it like where you got some trash. I'm put the shit in my pocket until I get the fuck out. Like, Cause ain't you don't put that shit on the ground here. Like the, the no, they will come get you. It's a dumb lesson to learn. Drag man. you back to the scene. <laughs> put your face in it like a puppy. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> right here. Seriously. So it's like at the end of the day. I, when I saw it, I had my initial thoughts. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure what happened. She showed up at the rental place on 10, and they was like, yo, 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 cool, cool out. Yeah. She don't tell me what... You, you, Fuck you yeah. mean, cool out. You cool out, pussy. Yeah. Stay right there. Yeah, Sonny from Bronxdale. Now you can't leave. Yeah, we're going to lock the door. Yeah. Stay right here. It sucks, but... And I, I think it needs to be more of that here. Where yeah. it's like, we need more rules and regulations. We're the only society that has a full-on list of rules. Like, you ever see the rule book <laughs> for just shit? Yeah. Not trying to be funny. The NBA has a rule book. The NFL has a rule book that has nothing to do with the NBA yep. rule book. My job has a rule. We about yep. to be part of a network. They got a rule book. Like yep. Enterprise had a rule book. They used to update that shit every year. They'd be like, you get the new rule book? They, they would make they, you sign they, it. You got to sign. They call you them uh, uh, addend addendums. Yeah, yeah. you got to sign for the addendum. That, that's how that shit would be. You yep. come into work, yo, before you go on the street, sign for this. You got to get the new. That shit is real. We're the only society that has rule books everywhere. And everybody is like, what rules? There ain't no rules. What you mean? Drawing? And that's my biggest thing with the with the chick with the, the Carly shit where we got everything now is just mental issues. Oh, they mental. Oh, they mental. No, the fuck, everybody not mental. I used to deal with that shit on the bus. They'd be like, oh, so and so crazy, like a passenger. Oh, yeah, he yeah. crazy. And I'd be like, he not the fuck crazy. If you crazy, walk into the fire. Right. Now I know you crazy. But your ass know fire hot. Your ass know to get the fuck out of the way of a fucking bus is flying down the fucking street. You ain't fucking crazy. People have gotten so compassionate and so empathetic that they've ignored the fact that some people are just fucking ridiculous. Like, some people just be on bullshit. And it's like, y'all refusal to hold them accountable, all that does is spurn more ridiculous motherfuckers because they know, on the whole, depending on where you are, if you in Philadelphia, you in New York, you in Seattle, you in anywhere in the state of California, motherfuckers is going to help you skirt accountability on everything. It's going to be a large contingent of motherfuckers that's willing to help you skirt accountability. I'll tell you Just this. because. You ever see the, the, the nigga that be playing the guitar? Car at the door, the entrance of the Retin Terminal over mm -hmm. here. Me and him got into it one day, a couple years ago on the bus. Every time he see me, he he know how to. We got into it on the bus. It was a detour going on, like yeah. they, you know when they do the bike races downtown. So the detour was like wild as shit. But I peeped that the street was open for me to get to market. So yeah. I told the people, I'm like, yo yo, 
the detour got me going up Arch to 21st, but I'm like, realistically, 19 is over because it's supposed to go down 19. I'm like, yo, I can just go down and be back on market, so I'm going to just take the regular route. I say that shit, come down, make the joint. He like, yeah, man, why this shit so all over the place today? Don't nobody know what's going on? Everybody just all over the place. I'm like, yo, I don't know what other buses you've been on or what other things have gone on, but as far as me, I'm pretty much been okay today. Like, I don't I don't know what other issues Yeah, I can't faced. speak to... Every bus route in the city, big dog. He was like, no bullshit. He he looked dead at me and was like, all you motherfuckers make me sick. <laughs> and I'm like, again, that's your issue. That's <laughs> your business. You know, whatever. And he was like, for no reason. Mind you, that those are two things. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. clearly see my For no reason, he was like, fuck you, man. And I, I pulled over. I stopped the jaw. And we just sat. And I just like turned and like looked at him and whatever. And he was like, what's, what's, what's wrong? And I was like, if you curse at me again. I'm going to smack you through this fucking windshield. Watch your mouth, man. I ain't cursed at you. I ain't get out of pocket with you. I ain't do nothing to you. I'm continuing down the street on the route. There was no reason for that. We grown men in this joint. I don't give a fuck about this shirt. I don't give a fuck about this job. <laughs> do not curse at me. I haven't cursed at you until you started doing that. But if you do it again, I'm going to take this shit all the way left. Nigga ain't saying nothing. Nigga held the door for me. Why was sitting there running to like stop fucking playing, y'all? Yeah. Like people just come outside with this energy that's just like nasty and dumb for zero reason. People will make you go to the extreme to get your point across. And it's like you're not crazy. You're not completely off your rocker because yeah. you know you fucking draw. But that's what happens when emotions run high and all yeah. this oh, shit. Oh, then that fuck you, I went too far. Yeah. Shit. Oh, damn, my bad, big dog. And 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 that's what, when these people go to these other places, you be thinking like, oh, I can just carry this how I carry it when I'm in, yeah. the, in the chicken strip on Lehigh. Yeah, when and I'm in just, Lexington, Kentucky, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. it, do whatever. It, like, it don't work like no, that. No, you can't. No, nah, they will put you in a box. So man. let this segment be a PSA to everyone everywhere. If you're traveling to the Emirates, you're traveling to Russia, you're traveling to Singapore, Asia in general, you cannot do what the fuck you want to do. Everybody, they have their own laws, their own customs, their own law of the land. I, it, it is nothing like one, ours. One thing I've seen in recent times is more and more of us at young age are, are really pulling off bucket list trips. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for years it was like people's dream to just leave the country and go explore and go travel. And I think it's beautiful because a lot of my white counterparts that I went to high school with and shit, you know what they did when they graduated high school? Took a year before college and went and backpacked through Europe mm -hmm. or went and spent two months in Nepal and doing all this crazy ass shit. So I think it's dope that more black people are becoming cultured worldly yeah. and going to experience. So I'm not shying away from that. But my biggest thing is if you know you act like a fucking park ape, here on the 33 <laughs> and down at fucking river deck. Like if, if they got a cat, like not trying to be funny. If you've gotten taken out of river deck, yeah, they had to carry you out of ditch day. <laughs> you, you can't come to the Emiratis with that same energy for events. Cause they definitely going to carry you out of wherever. The Modesty fuck. in Islam is the law of the land. Yeah, man. And you will comply or we will throw your ass in jail. <laughs> it's very, very straightforward and very simple. It's very pronounced. Like you said, walking around, you feel it. So if you walking around and you feel the, I need to straighten up and fly right, and you still on mm -hmm. bullshit, you deserve whatever comes to oh, you. As a I got a Jules Joe. He go, he go crack up with he is. <laughs> we come down to get the cars out of the valet at the W, right? Yeah. <laughs> he left the ticket for the car. I remember you up, told me. This. <laughs> <laughs> he left the ticket upstairs in the motherfucking room. So we get downstairs, and I, mind you, he's in different rooms. So I'm yeah. just like, oh, you got the ticket? He's like, oh, damn, I left it in the room. It's cool, though. Fuck it. And I'm just like, oh, man, this, this ain't going to be good. I'm like, <laughs> this ain't going to go good. I was like, yo, this, that ain't cool. I'm like, just go get the ticket. He's like, man, I ain't going all the fuck back up there for that, man. They know what's up. So, of course, the bull doesn't know what's up. <laughs> he has not been prepped on what's up. <laughs> when he showed up for work, his itinerary did not have what was up for him. Yeah, tall bull going to come down here with no ticket. He did not trying to take a Rolls Royce from you. So, the, the valet bull was like, yeah, I need the ticket. That's why we give you the tickets. Yeah. We give you the ticket so that when you come back, you give me the ticket. I give you the car. And I give you the car. Everybody wins, baby. Everything is straight. But he's like, if you showing up here with no ticket, how am I supposed to? And Jewel's whole thing is, ain't no crime in this country. He was like, right, but there might be something to take. Because <laughs> ain't no Y'all looking awful crimey right now. Because where is your ticket? Y'all looking crimey. <laughs> 
And I'm over there on the John, like, I'm damn near still. Like, man, don't you get tired? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yo. You like Homer Simpson falling yeah. back. In, you back in the lobby at this point. Like, this man is tripping. No, and I'm just going to get some more breakfast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got some more of them bagels. Yeah. Breakfast run till noon. I'm going to just go get some more breakfast. So I'm like, yo, just go get the ticket. Like, why are we making this thing? He's like, no, man, fuck this. They know good and goddamn well we the niggas with the Rolls Royce. Why the fuck is they acting like that? And I'm like, I feel you, but just go get the ticket. Please. Jules walk off. So he walks off. I'm like, all right, bet. He going to get the ticket. So the, the two valet niggas was like, Hey, man, your friend, what's going on? I'm like, oh, he, he went to get a ticket. They're like, no, he's in the lot. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I come down because the lot was underground. Yeah. I come down. This nigga is walking through the lot. <laughs> As opposed to just going to get the ticket. I'm going to create another problem for myself. So now I'm going through the lot with him. He's like, man, go to the car right here. Like, why don't y'all just get the car and bring it out? So the guy was like, yo, listen, man, I'm trying to help. Like, just, because he's like, if I call him people. <laughs> yeah, you going. <laughs> you you fit the going. description. So, long story short. If I call them people. <laughs> <laughs> long story short, he go get the ticket. So we come down, give him the ticket. They give us the car or whatever. We in the car. He like, no, because Ben Crump wouldn't have this. wouldn't allow this. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you caused all this shit. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? This is a thousand percent your fault. <laughs> what is that? This is nobody else's fault. You forgot the ticket. You yo. came downstairs. You harassed the yo. fucking people. You ended up on the parking deck <laughs> all to just end up going to get the ticket. <laughs> so this was me. Everything you just said, that's what I explained to him. You know what his response was? Man, shut up. <laughs> yeah, fuck all that. <laughs> Whose side is you on? Man, shut up, man. Yo. And it's like, but here go the thing. At the ballet at the W on fucking 15th and Chestnut, that shit fly. Yeah. Man, take this 15 hours, get my fucking keys, young boy. All right, man. Hell, that, 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 <laughs> Goddamn, old head. Goddamn, old head. You ain't got a curse at me. <laughs> <laughs> ballet at the casino? Shit. I used to tell them niggas, yeah, I'm part, but I'm keeping my keys because I don't know what the fuck y'all be doing. He's like, all right, what up? <laughs> I got the keys on my hip. I used to go to Valley Forest Casino and park in the valet lane and not pay the valet. I was just going to leave my car. <laughs> they just go inside. I'm like, if I got the key, man, I don't got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to think I'm in there playing Baccarat yeah, or something. Yeah, straight up. Like, that's real. So it's like over there, you definitely feel that shit where it's just like, yo, we got to abide by the rules, man. Like, that's just how it go, man. Yes, indeed. Straight up. What else you got? Before we get out of here, I want to talk about this YNW Melly case. Um, Melvin, you said the other day it was leaning towards a mistrial. It's, it's declared a mistrial. Oh, really? Officially declared oh, wow. a mistrial, and um, from the looks of it, his mom is saying that it was the votes was nine not guilty to three guilty. Mm. So essentially, that sets the grounds and the framework for his lawyer to put in a motion for this to not be retried mm. because it wasn't like it was 11 <clears> one. <throat> exactly. Yeah. So because like what they did was typically you got to have a unanimous jury in order to get convicted. They put in a rule which only exists in like Florida, Louisiana and a couple the other states. Eight, four. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, Master P. Um, uh uh, 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 C-Murder. C-Murder Jones was a 10-2. Yeah. And they was like, yeah, that was like one of the only states mm -hmm. where they can do that without yeah, a unanimous They, they dropped Melly shit to 8-4. to four. Oh, wow. 8-4. to four. So to see him come in and sweep and basically go the whole opposite direction with a 9-3 to three in his favor, the grounds for, at the bare minimum, they are going to retry this. The grounds for him to uh, be able to get bail very high now because of the juror standing or whatever like that. And the simple fact that like, not only did y'all not get a unanimous verdict in y'all favor, he damn near got a unanimous verdict in his favor. Right. And not to mention the fact that there's just a complete lack of physical evidence attached to this case. Like there's no, like no tangible evidence of like a gun. Um, <laughs> I've read clothes. I've and, read something where the, 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 the reporter was saying that, they were really, really trying to use the record. And yes. once the judge threw the record out, it was just like, like oh, God damn. Oh, damn. Like, oh, you doing real judge work today? <laughs> oh, you judging? <laughs> oh, you judging, judging. <laughs> so, so, so we can't use no circumstantial <laughs> evidence. Ask it a judge. Oh, damn, you judging, judging. <laughs> oh, you, oh, oh, we supposed to stick to the facts? Like, 
Oh, you really on some Yana shit today? Like that's and, funny. And, 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 he, and here's the thing. <laughs> oh, you done? I'm here to tell y'all the same <sighs> thing is about to happen in Young Thug's trial because what has <laughs> happened. The build up to Melly's case, the same way Thug's case is building up. The process, the voir dire process of selecting a jury has become so public and so yeah. prejudicial. There is no pool of 12 jurors and three alternates you can find that don't have some feeling Bruh. on this case one way or another. Yo, he can't get a fair shake. It's impossible. Did you you know the did you know the OJ jurors were sequestered? Yeah. And that you know that shit went on for two years. Yes. And the lady was like, imagine being away from your family two years in a fucking little room with no TV, no phone, no, no nothing. news access, none of that I'm shit. Like, Damn, he was. She was like literally like they, because the, people couldn't believe that the trial went on for so long, and then the jury uh, deliberation was like a couple of fucking minutes. Yeah. She was like, we was ready to go. Yeah, we been could wrap this. We shit was up. ready to go to fuck home. She was like, we didn't like whatever the fuck the room was leaning to. Was like, not gonna yeah. cool. We out. <laughs> yeah. So so in yeah. Melly's case, when they go for the jury you deliberation, Dan, you still so. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long, man. I'm I'm craving human <laughs> contact with anyone. <laughs> so with Melly's case, I don't give a fuck if it's all men. Just bring it. <laughs> so with Melly's case, when the jury goes back to deliberate, they start asking for shit, yeah. and they like, we need to see this, we need to see that, and I'm like, that's not good for the fucking prosecution. Like, like they need to they need to go back over stuff or whatever. But then you then you realize when it's a nine to three. A positive swing for the defense, you realize it's like them basically saying, we want to see this evidence so we can convince these three motherfuckers on why they're wrong right. so that they could come with us and we could just wrap this shit up. So he's going to have a very high grounds for this shit to basically be dismissed without prejudice. Um, they're not going to be able to find another jury pool. Nobody's not sitting through this shit all over again. The trial itself was like basically like three months long or whatever the fuck the case may be. And like you could tell that the that his like his lawyers put in for a mistrial. They put a motion in for a mistrial two times before yeah. this. They seen it coming. And this is the reason why you pay a million dollar legal team, a two million dollar legal team. And this is why Tory Lane's goofy ass is sitting in jail because he basically had his initial lawyer who was part of the OJ Dream team was like, this is some bullshit. I'm out of here. Wrote that nigga a letter basically saying like, I'm recusing myself from this shit. And then he ended up with like a real estate attorney or some bullshit fighting for his motherfucking life. I remember we uh, saw Chris Rock in AC years ago and he was like, this is right when he was doing the, uh, the, the Bigger and Blacker tour. And he was like... People always talk that, oh man, you know, you you you, you can't hire Johnny Cochran because you, you hire guilty. Johnny Cochran, you look. But he added to it. He was like, you look guilty. And he was like, uh, so what you what what, what you you want to hire the wrong motherfucker and not look guilty? He was like, he's like, you hire Johnny Cochran. Oh, you look guilty. He's like, yeah, but I'm going home. He's like, yeah. but you want to look innocent in jail? <laughs> like, no, nah, I'd rather look guilty at the mall. He's like, you come and leave <laughs> You come and leave bitch. Like, you know, you hire Johnny Cocker, you just look so guilty. He was like, hey, whatever. Size 41, you know? like, <laughs> <laughs> like, straight up. Because you got plenty of motherfuckers, my girl included, that's like, man, Tori ain't do that shit and blah, blah, blah. But nobody can explain who the fuck did it if Tory didn't do it? Like, so it's like, yeah, Tory look innocent. He in jail like a motherfucker. And they done pushed his sentencing back four times. That don't look good. Mm -hmm. Yes, his case was, he been in jail since Christmas. Yeah. We still ain't got to the sentencing yet. That don't look good. Yeah, sure. So it's like, yo, when, it, when it's times like this, when you fighting for your motherfucking life, you supposed to lay it all on the line. Yeah. Fucking Brian still went on television and said, I'm going to defend Jeffrey with every drop of blood I have in my body. You know why? Because that $10 million wire hit, nigga. Yeah. Every single thing that the prosecution come up with, challenge, challenge. I got a motion for this. I got a motion for that. I got a motion to quash. I got a motion to suppress. I got a motion to dismiss. Yeah. I got a motion for mistrial. Yeah. Because, and I was explaining this to my man the other day. I'm like, bro, when you hire high power attorneys, you don't hire them to prove that you're innocent. You hire them to expose the inequities yeah. in the case Money of the prosecution. Board. The money up the waters and fuck shit up to where people are confused and they don't know what to think. Yeah, what uh, what uh, Chris Gotti say about Shargell and him? He's like, we had twenty five charges by the time we went to actual trial. It was two, two. <laughs> like, 
Dismiss this, yeah. dismiss this. And it's like, and the same thing like with Melly. It was no gun to begin with. The fucking ballistics expert got blown up on the stand by the by the black defense attorney. He was a fucking monster. They in court passing notes, fucking making jokes and shit. The, the female attorney has a, a notebook that says my evil thoughts on it. I'm just like, yo, they just making a yeah. mockery of this whole shit. And I'm like, yo, when and if Young Thug ever fucking gets to trial, because I think at some point they're going to they get exhausted with this shit and they're going to offer him a plea. I know they don't want to. They're going to offer Offer him a plea and be like, yo, take 10. Like, take 10. You already been down for two years. Fucking do two more and come the fuck home on supervised release. Right. Like, they're going to get worn out with this shit. And there isn't a jury in fucking Atlanta. They're going to have to ask for a change of venue. There is no jury in Atlanta, whether it be Cook County, Fulton County, whatever, that isn't aware of what's going on with this case. Straight up. It's in the public purview every day of the week. Whether it be on law and crime, whether it be on fucking court TV, whether it be on the blogs, mm. shade room, academics, say cheese, Vlad TV, like it's everywhere. There's mm. no way he can get a fucking fair shake. They've been in jury selection for seven months. We we today in the Young Thug case, the jury, the uh, court proceeding was transferred to another county. Like where's it going? Anchorage, <laughs> Anchorage, Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. Like that's the only place he gonna be. That able should to get happen a fair with shake. the. Uh, uh, the, the Ronnie, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ronnie King. Ronnie King, yeah. He took that shit to like Simi Valley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of Los Angeles. We had to ask for a change of venue. So, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, even though the DA is probably going to be all hopped up, because, like, here's the thing about, about modern day court cases. And Kev made this brilliant point. Shout out our, our, our the number one attorney in Philadelphia, Kevin Hart Jr. He said that everybody's clout chasing, judges, lawyers, prosecutors included. So what happens is when, police officers, when a case comes in and it's since it's got big headlines and it's sensational and you got a rap star that's got supposedly got split personalities accused of a double murder plot to on his two friends and there's text messages and somebody's girlfriend got fucked and like all of this mess it's narratives and it's in and, and with narratives you can then use that as a career booster to tell a story if you're the one to put this crazy ass rapper away mm-hmm. so fuck the evidence the narrative is so juicy and right. so tantalizing we gotta proceed with this even if we get blown up in court Nigga, which the, is what the fuck happened be funny if you really look at the oj case everybody dropped the best-selling book Yes. Ito, Furman, everybody. Darden, Marsh, everybody was dropping books, doing shows. Johnny Cocker ended up with, what, eight different law offices? Right. Like, that shit is real. Like, everybody became a fucking star out yep. of the O.J. Jones. On both sides. On both sides. So, so the, so the, res, so the, the, it, it's too tantalizing to turn down. And, you know, a lot of times people work in the DA's office and stuff like that as a career builder, as a stepstone to be able to go and do other shit. Be a fucking attorney general. Be a fucking secretary of state. Be a motherfucking, um, you know, be a Supreme Court justice. Be a judge. Whatever the fucking case may be. It's a good resume builder. And they're going to, when you go in for these interviews at the next level, they're going to ask you about what cases you prosecuted and shit like that. And you want to have good stories to tell because that's what's going to carry you forward in your career. But the problem with that is when you completely ignore the evidence and the discovery attached to this shit, and it's just a bad case, and you just go to court, and your ballistics expert gets blown up. The chief of police gets blown up on the stand. Like, all your cross-examinations is bad. You fucking losing witnesses and shit like that. That's going to end up having a reverse effect where you're going to be stuck in the DA's right, office. Right, right. You're not going to have nowhere to fuck to go. Straight because up. it's going to make you look incompetent because you you basically looked at the narrative as opposed to the evidence, and is this a really a prosecutable case? So I don't really see how they have grounds to be able to go in front of a judge and get them to approve to this case again because they're still not going to have no fucking uh, no tangible evidence. They the witnesses that they have was all dog shit. They can't bring none of them police officers back up because they all got blown up on the stand by cross examination. So I don't even know where they go from here. They might just got to walk away from this shit. So is Melly out? He's not out right now, but it's basically like they got a certain amount of time to refile this case. Um, before it's basically like it just goes away, hmm. and it gets See, treated I never like really it never knew happened. How that works with the mistrial thing? Yeah. So you can get a mistrial and then basically stay in jail. You can stay in jail pending further prosecution, or they could just say we just declined to drop the, the to, to proceed with this blah blah blah, and then you just go to fuck home. Hmm. So what do you know? What the time limit is? 
Um, I think it's probably like a couple months or something like that. Maybe ninety days. Yeah, maybe. I think it's longer than that. Longer than that. I think you said six months. Six months, one hundred and eighty days. Hmm, let me look. Yeah, so that's going to that's going to determine everything. But the whole thing is, it's like on your first trial, y'all didn't have no evidence. So on your second trial, you really not gonna have no more fucking evidence. You know what I'm saying? They threw out the Snapchat shit. They threw the fucking uh. They threw the phone out. They threw out the one witness's testimony. They threw the song out. So it's like, what do y'all have? Uh, it says, <clears throat> once a criminal case has been ruled a mistrial, the prosecution may decide to refile the case. However, the judge may prevent them from doing so. When a judge rules a mistrial and dismisses a case with prejudice, the case cannot be retrialed. Most counties have 90 to 180 days 90 yeah okay yeah so i was right 90 90 90, me and dan were both right 90 to 180 so that means that they're gonna have to come with such a rock solid package to compel this judge to say all right let's proceed with this like they basically have to come with they gotta have a smoking gun for they need a smoking gun and there literally wasn't a gun in the first case yeah nine to three (laughs) innocent is that says a lot. That's a, that you gotta you gotta do so much. Nine work times to out of ten, your best your best punch is your first punch. Yes. So you're not about to like reload. Yeah, the case just gets weaker from yeah. there. You're not about to, especially with all your witnesses. You presented your best evidence, your best witnesses. You don't have be like, oh, them witnesses ain't work. Oh, y'all ain't know I had. Like, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 don't, it don't normally work like that. And Mel, and like I said, Melly's attorney what team. saying for my last trick? Yeah, like, Melly yeah, yeah. hired four pit bulls, like Man. dangerous fucking attorney. They was whooping their ass. When I seen they blew up the ballistics expert, he the, the black attorney. He straight up and said, he said, so not only do you not know what happened here, you don't know what the fuck is. He didn't say fuck. He's like, you don't know what's going on in general. And he's in the in the, the ballistics expert is like, well, well I, I, he didn't know what the fuck to say. I'm just like, yeah, this don't look good at all. And that was early. That was the first week of trial. He blew the ballistics expert up. Yeah. So it's like, where do you, where do you go from here? If that nine to three is real, if that's not some propaganda coming from his legal team and his mom, and they really had nine votes for not guilty, how the fuck do we turn around and think we're going to get an eight to four the other way on the second swing of this shit? Me and Jules was talking the other day. With no new evidence. With no new evidence. I, I was like, Kev, Dunbar, and Anwar have inspired me. Like, I think I want to, like, try law. Like, I wouldn't mind, like, really trying to, like, learn law and really, like, yeah. pass the bar and become a... And not just... I Like, I low-key just want to win a case. Like, I don't know what I... Like, even <laughs> if it was in traffic court. Like, I just want to... You know what I'm saying? And I rest my case, Yana, and, and get a standard ovation. Like, I just want to do that shit one time. That shit seemed cool as fuck. No, I mean, like I said, I've been I've been binge watching Suits for the last two weeks, and the the lawyer aesthetic it's the coolest fucking yeah. job. It's hard ass work, but the aesthetic of it is cool as shit, and it's universally respected by everybody. As long as you're not a traffic court attorney, yeah. like if you real deal attorney, whether you in the DA's office, you a defense attorney, you doing uh, catastrophic injury, you doing entertainment law, whatever, whatever. It's a career that just has a ton of cachet attached to it. Yeah. yeah. I just like I said, I just want to win a case. Just don't want to know. You know what I'm saying? Undefeated. You know what I'm, I'm retired. retired, undefeated. You know what I'm saying? Never lost. Are you are you dealing with Judge uh, Judge Johnson? Yeah, that's, that's my man. You know what I'm saying? We go back. You know what I'm saying? Like that that shit just seemed cool to win a fucking case. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? I was watching my cousin Vinny the other day, and I'm just like, damn man, like you really pulled the that two shit utes. off. Two youths. Excuse me, sir. The two youths. He said, you mocking me? That nigga came in with the penguin. <laughs> he said, you mocking me? He's like, no, sir. You told me not to wear my ridiculous leather jacket. He's like, my suit went into the mud. The town only got one dry cleaners. You believe that? One dry cleaners. <laughs> so I got this ridiculous suit to appease you, to not wear my leather suit. Like, I hold you in contempt. What else? <laughs> what else? What else? You no, Leo will uh, catch you if you can. Do you concur? Yeah. 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 Straight up. Like, this shit didn't start yet. <laughs> Yo. Motherfuckers, there wasn't nobody in the courtroom either. <laughs> Straight up, man. I remember the, uh, when, uh, when, uh, remember I was, like, out of work. I was running it, being out of work with my hand got broke yeah. or whatever. And... 
Lee was like, they're going to send you back to work this time. I was went to the hand doctor or whatever. And because the cash had been off, I was like getting through therapy, whatever. Yeah. She's like, yeah, you going back to fuck to work. I was like, I'm mean, hopefully he, you know what I'm saying? Let me rock out for like another month. She's like, there's no reason to. Your hand is healthy. You're perfectly fine. You can go back to work. I'm like, yeah, but if they're going to have me out for another month, they like, she was like, there's no way they're letting you rock out for another month. She came in the room with me. The doctor, he's like, put my hand up. He looked at it. He was like, the bone looks like it's healing. It looks like it's pretty much healed. I'm looking at the tissue. The tissue feels pretty firm. He was like, um, I think I'm think I'm going to probably keep you sidelined for another 30 months. Let that tissue fully heal. I was like, I concur. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's a great diagnosis. Give me another 30 days. I was like, yeah, I concur. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you're the most annoying motherfucker on the planet. I say, hey, but I concur with the, yeah, the doc. No, no. He make it when you spit, you yeah, spit. When you spit, you spit. It sounds like some concurrence to me. Motherfucker. Like, yo, straight up, man. But I got nothing else for this. You got anything else you want? Nah, man. Um, it's been another good one. It's been a good show, man. Make sure y'all get y'all tickets to TRP Weekend. Go to officialtrpe.com. Yo, we got an event. announcement coming yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we do. Yeah, man. Had a real good, uh, what do you call them things? Zoom call. Zooms, yeah. Had a real good Zoom the other day with a couple people, man, a couple players. You know. Yeah, some certified players. Yeah, man. Should be pretty Got cool. Got an announcement coming up. Y'all going to be getting a lot more TRPE starting yeah. in the fall. Starting in the fall, there's going to be more shows on the main feed, but that doesn't mean to not go to Patreon because where exactly. it's going to be more here, it's going to be more there. Exactly. So, yeah, man. We working. I'm happy. Big bro said we working. Oh, yeah. Big bro. Yeah. <laughs> So to actually uh, have a big bro is kind of wild. Yeah, you know I don't have a big bro. I'm, yeah, I am no. the big bro. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Like to actually have a big bro is kind of crazy. Like, but yeah, TRP weekend uh, sponsored by 14th and Market, powered by and powered by 14th and Market. Go to officialtrpe.com. Get y'all tickets there. Uh, Patreon. Go to patreon.com/slash officialtrpe. I'm back on Twitter at still trpe. I couldn't stay off. I tried Threads for a week. That shit ain't it. Threads is ass. Back on Twitter now. I'm back on Twitter now. Well, we are back on Twitter. Yes, now. yeah, yeah. Uh, still T R P E, all capital letters for the T R P. Not that it matters. You can still find me. Just you know, right. In lowercase. Sort of that. like still D R E. Exactly. Yeah. I'm such an old nigga in that. You regard. are. Old <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, they gonna dig this. Yeah. They nobody <laughs> caught the reference. <laughs> they didn't give a shit. Oh. What's that name? Treacherous Three. You know what I'm <laughs> treacherous T R P E. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I use this treacherous no more. Yeah, man, straight up. But that's what's up. So yeah, follow well, Chad, us, whatever on Twitter. Uh, I got nothing else, man. Solid week. Thoughts and prayers, man. We appreciate we gonna, we gonna y'all. Do, we go, what day is it? Twenty second, twenty third, something yeah. like that. So we got to record like four in the next couple weeks. Yeah. We got a lot the of next. Patience. 10 days. Like, yeah, so we got we got a lot of Patreon work to do. So we're going to get that done this week. Yes, indeed. Um, Like I said, man, I got nothing else, man. We should be, a, be able to make an announcement, you know, three weeks in the next month, mm-hmm. something like that, around yep. the 18th, 20th. Yeah, range, somewhere in there. Somewhere yep. around there. Um, We'll see y'all later, I guess. Peace. Holla back.